Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're ready for the first chat. The first chat with a beautiful man. Let's and see. If, let, yeah, I know. <laughs> Let's see if this works. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good evening to all of you. Welcome. I am Josh Strife Hayes. And I, of course, I'm Callum Upton. Welcome to all of you. We're going to talk about MMORPGs. Callum, it's the first podcast. People can see the chat on the screen. How professional does this look? Do you know what? I've never done anything so professional in my life. Mm. And that, that really says a lot. I think, yeah, I'm the same. I mean, this is the most perfect. This is, I've put more effort into this than anything else, and I was a teacher. So that tells you a lot about the quality of the classes that I was teaching. Were you a substitute teacher, though? <laughs> that, that's the, the real question. I was kind of one of those teachers that, like, you... You saw them every now and again. It wasn't fully substitute. It wasn't like you saw me once and never again. It was like I popped up every now and again. Yeah, you're then... like a reoccurring character. Yeah, like I was, <laughs> I was a reoccurring side character in some school children's education. That's what I was. Yeah. Right, uh, we've got 108, nearly 200 people here with us. Guys, in the chat, what do you think about the chat on the screen? How's it looking? Is it looking sexy? Yes, why are you not using the RuneScape mug? I'm sorry, I asked a question and straight away we just immediately get uh, get shot. Cal, what are your guys thinking? Um, I think they're loving the chat. It's it's looking good, looking sexy, Excellent. apparently. Lax, thank you for the other stuff. Going down well. So, let's let's start off straight away. Let's go quickly. Cal. Let's do it. What's the greatest MMORPG game of all time? Ooh, it's got to be RuneScape. I agree. Right, guys, that was the first episode of yeah. the podcast. Thank you very much for joining <laughs> Thanks us. Thanks for coming along, everybody. We will see you all next week. I'm glad we got that question all sorted and sorted out. Got two hours to fill now. <laughs> yeah, no, we just should we just should we just play RuneScape for the next two hours, just without even talking. It's yeah, it's probably <laughs> best, isn't it? Just silence. So <laughs> let's let's just chat. A lot of people in my chat know what I do. They know that I make a lot of YouTube videos, and a lot of people in your chat know what you do. You make yes. a lot of uh, scam videos, but why don't you explain what you do for my chat, and then I'll explain what I do for yours, and then we'll, we'll cross over. Right, okay. So I try to cover as many scams as possible on YouTube, uh, such as Kickstarters, just general nonsense with metaverses. Um, and, and the occasional little little fun one like Soldier Boy. But yeah, that, that's mostly what I do. And a bit of game development, uh, devlogs. All right, so Soldier Boy does not own Atari. We're, we're convinced of that. No, no. Although we are reaching out to him to try and get Nightmare <laughs> World as a Soldier console exclusive. <laughs> not quite happened yet. I'm not so quite. I'm sorry, I didn't think the first podcast that... I ever hosted with you would involve the, the sentence we're reaching out to soldier boy someone's got to do it he needs some games on that console epic have already told him no for fortnight he, the guy's he's slacking <laughs> I, I would have accepted any other developer like you know mod ash for runescape oh, brilliant oh maybe we can talk to you know, arena net yeah. for Guild Wars 2. Fantastic. Maybe we No, can... we've got to aim low. We're, we're unheard of. We've got to aim really low to be at bottom of the barrel. Can you imagine how insulted Soldier Boy would be if he heard this? Probably very, <laughs> You yeah. are the lowest level of guest that we realistically think we could get on a podcast about games and you don't even own a game company. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. It's, it's I reckon brilliant. we could do it. Yeah, I think that. I mean, he we... doesn't read contracts, so we could put anything in there. That is true. He doesn't read anything in his contract. We could tell him he owns the co he owns the podcast now. We could tell him that he owns a, a million Strife Shares. Upton coins, and Strupton coins. Strup <laughs> Strupton coins. <laughs> Guys in the chat, please buy Strupton coins because we need to be super rich. That's yeah, what we need. Yeah, pump, stop pumping Strupton coins, quick. Yeah, it's it's a pump and dump, guys. But I guarantee, I 100% promise that we're on your side with this. Yeah, mm -hmm. diamond hands and hoddle. Yeah, don't worry about all the other streamers and influencers lying to you. We wouldn't lie. No, never. never. I wonder if Soldier Boy could invest in Earth too. I bet he would. Do you, uh, do you know what? I, I reckon they're going to go for him next. I, I think I've brought them together on my channel. <laughs> it's, it's a match made in heaven. <laughs> Soldier Boy is that's going to be the next Earth Two advert. It's just going to be Soldier Boy doing that whatever dance he did. Was it the, oh, was it called the Soldier the Boy Superman, dance? Superman wasn't it? It was Superman. A quick question to the people who have joined for an MMORPG based podcast. We are three minutes in. Is this where you imagined it went would go to? 
To be honest, if they expected anything else, then then they're, they're in yeah. the wrong podcast. Yeah. So one of the great reasons that we've got the chat on the stream is I can see the chat from my stream and you can see the chat from yours. And yes. we, we want to take questions. We want to talk. It's not just me and Cal talking at each other. We want to talk about MMORPGs and about Jagex Shogun. Jagex Shogun is in the chat right now. There we go. We've actually got someone from Jagex hanging out in the chat with us. Wow. Yeah. I mean, Are they going to be on the Soldier console? Yes, it's not Soldier Boy. Shogun, how much influence do you think Jagex... Does Soldier Boy own Jagex? I mean, he made that Six Sea Shanty remix, didn't he? Did he? Do you remember? Genuinely, did he? No, genuinely. Do you remember the... No. Do you not remember Soldier Boy started playing RuneScape and it was a big thing? Oh, God, he streamed yeah, it for like he did, three didn't months, he? And there was that... There was the... Um, his remix of Sea Shanty that had so many N-bombs in it that it got removed off Twitch. Right. God, yes, I do remember that Soldier Boy played RuneScape for a bit. Shogun. What a time. Shogun, was that... Was that be, be real with us. Was that like a paid thing? Or, or or did Soldier Boy actually wake up one morning and think, you know what I want to do? I want to play RuneScape. Because, I mean, most of us wake up and think that anyway. But, was yeah, but that... there's no way Jagex would, like... <laughs> there's no way Jagex would... Uh... Put would, that on their players. It, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be a choice Jagex decide to make. No, no. If anything, uh, I think there's probably like a two AM crisis meeting when they realised you were streaming RuneScape. <laughs> just uh, all the old school team got woken Hit up. The alarm! Everybody to the main office, quick! <laughs> quick, find Soldier Boy and just follow him around. <laughs> make sure he's his IP. Do Get him offline. Get him out of here. Uh, Shogun is saying people wanted to vote for him in. People wanted to vote him in for the Golden Gnomes. Yes, I, I remember that. There were so many oh. really talented, um, really talented yeah. content creators in RuneScape. Could Soldier you imagine Boy. it's Swampletics versus, versus Soldier Boy for the Golden Gnome? <laughs> now that is a YouTube boxing match I would pay to yeah. see. Swampletics versus Soldier Boy. But not actually you know, the regular Swampletics, just his actual in-game avatar. Yeah. Fully pumped up with Guffins ready to go. After Just he's. Rendy jumping in from the ceiling as like a saving <laughs> blow. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Oh, right. Uh, okay. 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 Serious podcast time now. Yeah. And this podcast isn't about fun. Because, I mean, I don't think MMOs are about fun, are they, really? No, God no, it's all about the grind. They're That's about... what this is going to be. You're going to have to struggle to get through this podcast. Yeah. It's. I mean, I, I really wanted to call the podcast The Grind. But someone has already taken it. Dude, everything we thought of was taken. Right. And they were all great as well. We yeah. thought we were being genius. Oh, God. I mean, don't get me wrong. We were. We were really clever. We were. We were someone so... else was genius before us. We so that was the catch. smart with that shit. So many people. So We were sat there thinking, right, it's going to be an MMO-based podcast. I mean, call it MMOs before hoes. Maybe we should call it the grind. Maybe we should call it the MMOs guild. Before I still think MMOs before hoes I is like a good that. name. I still stand by I like that. that. We it might, ca might catch a few keyword filters on the internet. Yeah, we, but... yeah I don't think Apple would like it that much. We even went with uh, my podcast left me. But that's such yeah. a specific joke. So niche. So niche. <laughs> I think it's so niche. Um, the grind is a sick WoW Machinima channel. I know, right? It's just... We were coming up with so many good names, and all of them were taken. Um, yeah, we, we could go with buying girlfriend, buying GF, could be a thing. How about MM? No, so many choices. What do your guys think, Cal? Hang on, guys, suggestions. Hit me with them. Not no more of this. Uh, two guys, one mug, or anything. <laughs> Josh, the amount of people that suggested that all at the same time, terrifying. It was like a preemptive attack. I put the ping out and everyone just jumps in, two guys, one mug, and I'm you, like, no. You guys no. were ready for it, weren't they? Your guys yeah, were like they knew. straight up they knew. ready. That was, o that was Only the scams. <laughs> only scams. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh. I like that. Oh, name it Cash Shop. Two guys, one MMO. I like that. That could work. General... T for two? Yeah. General chat could work. General chat. Supton coin. I still think Supton coin is a good idea. My MMO left me. Uh, there's, we're going to have to think about there's it. There's so many. Yeah. We're gonna so to, many good ones. We're going to have to talk about it. So, yeah. for the first episode, every episode is going to be about a different question. A different yes. point of view, different game, different design philosophy or whatever. Let's let's discuss what is the greatest MMORPG of all time. Because it might not be the greatest to you or to someone else, but what do you think the most influential is or the one that affected the genre the biggest? I... I know people are, are seeing this coming already, but I genuinely think RuneScape, due to ease of access, that mm. allowed so many kids to get into MMOs that just couldn't get into MMOs before. Mm. 
It was a, I think it was a game changer. Absolutely. When they first made RuneScape Classic, it was a browser game. You didn't need a download. And that was nope. a major, major factor for accessibility, wasn't it? Because you yep. had all the school kids and all the library kids and everyone with a uh, yeah. kind of public shared cafe could play RuneScape. You, what were their competitors? You had World of Warcraft, you had Asheron's Call, you had EverQuest, you had Ultima. But th they needed a download. And most people didn't own a PC in their yep. home at the time. Exactly. This is exactly what I was just going to say. The big thing is most people didn't own a PC or at least, you know, one of their own that they could use whenever. Mm -hmm. So they had to play at, at lunch or before or after school, which means school PC, which means um, filters, which means blocked websites, yeah. no downloads, yeah. which means you can only play RuneScape. And honestly, I, I think there was maybe one or two others, maybe like Dragon Dragon Quest, is it? Or uh, Sorry, um, Adventure the Quest. name. Adventure Quest. The 2D, the, one. the 2D one made by Adam Bond. Yeah. Yeah. Adventure Quest. There's, there's that. There's, uh, I think there was about three maybe. Mm. Tibia at the time, I think. Tibia's actually still going. I think Tibia still holds the record for the longest going single MMORPG in the world. Really? Yeah. Tibia's never shut down and re released. There have been games that launched before Tibia that have come back, but Tibia is the longest single run Since of an MMORPG. Consecutive RPG. run. Yeah. That's impressive. That's really impressive. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, still going. I mean, I, I remember hearing loads of stories about Tibia, but I've never played it myself. I, I know. So I was. I used to raid on WoW with a lot of Swedish and Norwegians. They loved Tibia. Mm. The Sweden was Tibia mad. They loved it. Right. So they were going on about it all the time. And I was looking at it. I was like, eh. <laughs> not, not. It doesn't look like it's for me. <laughs> that's your first, your whole review. Yeah, you, my review just, is just. Mm. Eh, that's it. Looked at it through a screen share. Just. Eh. Nah, don't want it. No, I've I played a bit of it to get some footage for an old video I was making. I don't think I played enough of it to really appreciate it, but it's got to be something there. If, yeah. If people are playing. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. I mean, if, if if it's been played, it's captured an audience. Yeah. And that definitely. I suppose that's all that matters. Yeah. Whether you know, regardless of how they've done it, and uh, <laughs> from what I've heard, they've stayed really far away from microtransactions as well, at least yeah. anything impactful. Yeah, their so website, I, Fair play to them. Very basic, fair very simple, but it's, it's carrying on. So yeah, you had the Dark Age of Camelot was mentioned in the chat as well. You had all these amazing MMORPGs that required a download. People didn't own PCs yeah. or they didn't have PCs that could play them, so you went to the library. I mean, I know I did. And you played yeah. a game. That you, when you were in school, websites that hosted games that weren't blocked, there was almost mm -hmm. like a black market for that knowledge. Yeah. You know, you'd walk up to your mate at the... You know, in the lunch hall, you walk up to your mate to break and you'd be like, flashgames.com. And you'd yeah, be like, you'd what like, are you going, bebounblocked.com. Yeah, you'd be like, have you got any proxies? <laughs> yeah, yeah, any proxies that don't wear Is this podcast going to be on Spotify? Uh, hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, Sheldon's going to be on absolutely. Newgrounds was king, says GM. Don't forget Newgrounds. Newgrounds. Cool. We, was it, we were talking about that, weren't we? That Newgrounds, um, yeah. that you knew someone who worked, or know someone Mini that worked at New. Mini Clip. Mini Clip, I, is it? Yeah. Right, yeah. Newgrounds, though, that was incredible. I, I I lived on it until it got blocked. In fact, yeah. I don't know how they did this, but in our school, we'd keep jumping from proxy to proxy. Someone would, like, like you say, in the library, sneak up to you and be like, try Pearl Proxy. And you'd be like, yeah, okay. Everyone's on it the next day. So the geek at the front gets it banned because he's doing it right next to the teacher. <laughs> but the, Newgrounds, they somehow managed to ban the site itself, regardless of proxies, and I cannot tell you how they did that. Hmm. It, our school just somehow banned the website, regardless of proxies. Some and school... uh, that was a sad day. I'm sure someone got lynched in the dinner hall for that. Yep, DS just said Commando series on miniclip. Commando 1, 2, and 3, and it was like a side-scrolling game with <laughs> helicopters that would fly down and you shoot a little bazooka up at them. Oh, that shit was great. And my yeah. friend said to me recently, I uh, said, hey, Josh, I work at miniclip. And I'm like, there is no way that is still going. But apparently, yeah, it's still making a lot of money. It's still doing really well. It's great. Yeah. I, I just want Fun Orb to come back. Oh, Fun Orb was God. my life. If you're in the chat and you didn't play Fun Orb, it was a project that Jagex launched around, I want to say like 20, 2009 maybe? 2010? Mm. Yeah, it was around then, yeah. And then it was a bit later. So Jagex kind of went to... They started making games beyond RuneScape because they didn't start with RuneScape. They had games before RuneScape and Fun Orb was their attempt to make other ones. They had a strategy game called Armies of Gilanor and there was a, a shooty alien game top-down and there was an amazing Worms clone called Arcanist. That's the one. Yeah. Arcanist was it for me. I, I, that was what I bought it for. I, I played the hell out of it and I, I'm so sad that's gone. Mate, that was I, it's, it. That was the reason to have Fun Orb membership. Yeah, 
Yeah, in fact, I worked out that I didn't have much money at the time when Fun Old was, was big. And I worked out that with about 30 quid, you could put yourself on the top of the Fun Old leaderboard. Because the yeah. way you worked is you, you beat a load of people and then you prestiged. And if you lost to people who were lower prestige than you, you lost even more points. But if you boost had... Boost yourself. Yeah, if you had like eight different accounts, all with yeah. membership, you could organise your own games and boost yourself up. And it would cost yeah. about 30 quid. And I seriously considered doing that for a long time. And then I thought, I don't have 30 quid spare. But my one main memory of Fun Old was I went to RuneFest, the RuneScape convention, in 20... I think 2010, 2011, and 2012, uh, one of those times. And they had a lot of PCs set up for people to play RuneScape, obviously, because you wanted to sit down and all yep. the gamers were playing it. Someone, I don't know how, because they locked these PCs to just RuneScape. I don't know how, but someone managed to get Fun Orb up on these PCs. Oh. So what happened was the, the, the Jagex moderators were all walking around, and you could see this moment when the JMods looked over to their bank of computers that were meant to be showcasing the new RuneScape boss. And there were like 10 people just sat there all playing Arcanist against each other. And they couldn't get mad because it was a Jagex game. Yeah, it's their game. They love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, we're playing your game, guys. It's your fault for making a good game. Yeah. I I loved that game so much. And I wish I wish it was coming back. Because yeah. here's like I'm gonna give I'm gonna set the, the era for you here. Do it. So I didn't get pocket money. I got like phone bill allowance. I'd get topped up. Now. You know where this is going. Sneak yep. off to one stop, five pound off the credit, get yourself a, a top up on the on your yeah. balance yeah. on RuneScape, and you could straight onto Arcanist. You could text yeah. to get membership, and it was like six quid, but you did yeah. it. It was it was so good. Oh, and my mum was always like, "How have you never got any credit on your phone?" And I'm just like, "I'm just popular, mum. I'm, I'm really popular." Texting so many. When people. in reality, I had no friends, which is how I could afford to do that. Like yeah. five yeah. pound on Arcanist. Yeah, just texting lots of people. So. RuneScape did really, really well. RuneScape was accessible. And we went on to Adventure Quest as well earlier. So if anyone's not yeah. familiar with Adventure Quest, Adam Bon is a developer that I've got a massive amount of respect for, the guy that created Arctic's Entertainment. And he made loads and loads and loads of games, about a thousand, before he finally settled on making Adventure Quest. He was a guy who found out every way he could fail before he succeeded. And yeah. Adventure Quest was an online adventure game, but it wasn't an MMORPG, was it? It was more like a single-player host online game. Yeah, there, there were mild multiplayer aspects mm. to it, mm. um, but they they were like, I, I think it was just like marketplace and stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, pretty much. There, there was, they, you never yeah. really could do anything with other people to no. begin with, at least. And then you had Dragon Fable, which did have dueling with other people. You could go to a duel arena. Yes. And you loaded like your character up and someone else could duel your character, but it wasn't live. You told your character kind of what you wanted them to do in order of yeah. ability, and it would... It was like a Pokemon like a... battle, wasn't it, sort yeah, it of, was but like pre-scripted. A... Yeah, yeah, like a ghost version of them. So it was there, but it wasn't you fighting them. It was the minimal form of, like, multiplayer. Yeah. <laughs> like, the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, but yeah. and then they went into... There was Mech Quest released, and then there was another game after that, and then they did... Adventure Quest Worlds, which was the actual MMORPG yeah. version, still side-scrolling 2D, and then they did mm -hmm. Adventure Quest 3D. Do you think, as a developer, that that is the correct series of steps to make an MMORPG? You, you make a small game, establish yeah. it as a franchise, and then make it into a bigger multiplayer game. I think it's definitely an easier way to go. Um, if you can get people's attention with a product that you've done correctly and that works... It's easier to transition that to an MMO. I, I definitely, I definitely think that much. Um, well, what's a good example of, of? Okay, I was going to say Fallout. That's not a good example. Um, no, but I see where you're going with it. The idea that it is a yeah. franchise, probably the, um, the Elder Scrolls Online. Yeah, the, the reason, even though, um, yeah, Elder Scrolls Online, perfect example. Yeah, that that was a franchise that built a lot of lore up, and and that is another thing, lore. Uh, if you're making lore for a big multiplayer online game, you're going to struggle. And I can tell you that from someone who's on a team of people that are doing exactly that. Yeah. It's it's a, like an all-hands-on-deck thing to try and get lore together and cobble it together yeah. in like a loose form and then spin this web out further. But it's easier to do that if you've made a single-player game, messed mm -hmm. up your lore entirely because it doesn't make sense, yep. had the players fix it for you with mods, <laughs> and then you add that to your MMO and you're sorted. You know, when we look at the biggest MMORPG, I mean, we, we forgot the biggest one, World of Warcraft. It was yep. Warcraft. Warcraft yes, 1, Warcraft actually, 2, Warcraft 3. Yeah. Before it became a big game. And now you've got um, you've got Final Fantasy XIV, Elder Scrolls Online, uh, Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. You take single-player franchises, and this is another question. So when we talk about the greatest MMORPG of all time... 
if we look at games that have launched because of franchises, do we have to weigh up how many people are playing for the franchise and how many people are playing for the gameplay? I I was just about to say this because when I when I said um, what did I say? There's a game just as a really bad example, Fallout. Fallout. How many people are playing that MMO, which it well, you know, I suppose it's sort of an MMO, mm -hmm. um, which is a disaster by you know by every metric because it's Fallout. Mm. Who would be playing it if it was Rust? If Rust had released in that state, yeah, or if a no name like, thing, yeah, yeah, no name, just a blank name, it would be a disaster. Nobody would be playing it. Yeah, I truly believe this about Lord of the Rings Online. I yeah. think if, if you took Lord of the Rings Online as it is now and you took all the Lord of the Rings references out of it and you made it just a generic fantasy online yeah. game, it would go the same way that Rift went. You, it would you're be you're okay absolutely for spot on. Yeah. yeah. People are playing it for the name recognition, not yeah. for the the mechanics. And I, I can back that up because I uh, you mentioned it a few quite a few streams ago, probably about five months ago, and mm. I was like, oh, Lord of the Rings Online, I've never played that. I really want to play that. Yeah. Well, did I know anything about it? No. Did I know it was Lord of the Rings? Yes. Is that why I wanted to play it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, then, and then I looked at it and I was like, you know what? Second thoughts, I'll, I'll give it a miss. Yeah. I mean, people in the it's chat the are saying Star Trek Online. Star Trek yeah. Online is made by the same company that made Neverwinter. It's made by Cryptic. And Neverwinter is... You're right. Yeah, I've got a very, very soft spot in my heart for Neverwinter. I've played it for a long time. I played it earlier today to get some footage for a video. If you were to take the references to Dungeons & Dragons out of Neverwinter, you would lose nothing like yeah. it's not related to D, D in any way you could change no. neverwinter to a generic fantasy and keep everything else the same and it would still be an okay game yeah does psn's just said in my chat uh, how do you think new worlds will do as a new property and i think that's a, an interesting point Ooh. because i think it's doing the best it can for a new ip mm -hmm. i I don't see how they can... There's nothing they've got to leverage other than, like, Amazon's, you know, AWS services and that. Yeah. Which is a, another thing entirely, you know, that Amazon's basically got free run to make a game at no cost. Yeah. Free servers and everything. But I, I think they've got the benefit of being able to run their servers for free because, you know, they, they own AWS. Yeah. But in terms of, like, law and story, they, they really are just... It's a clean slate, isn't it? Anything they say goes in there. And I think that's going to be a... A sore point for a lot of people that want to try a new MMO. They, they want to at least have some attachment to it before they join, yeah. I feel, because it's a big commitment, isn't it? Yeah. Have you noticed how a lot of people have just described New World by saying it's 3D RuneScape? They've, yeah. they've basically just said it's 3D RuneScape. The the lore and the plot in New World is almost irrelevant. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah. The It's like the lore and the plot within Magic the Gathering. When you sit down to play a game of Magic the Gathering, the actual lore, the story behind it, doesn't matter at all it's just the cards when you sit down to play new world it doesn't matter what you're wearing or what weapon you're using or where you are in the game it only matters mechanically unless the law affects the mechanics yeah. the law is just fluff yeah no you're you're absolutely mm. spot on it's yeah. it, it is going to be interesting to see how new blood yeah enters the, the space because mm. um i i think they're already at a disadvantage because they've got nothing to yeah. they haven't got that push behind them one thing that worries okay. me is a lot of people want to theory craft the fastest ways to get through an MMORPG. And if yeah. people find enjoyment in that, that's absolutely fine. You know, you want to theory craft, theory craft. That, yeah. That's up to you. People on Reddit have already theory crafted the fastest way to max out New World and then already yeah. started asking the question, what are we going to do afterwards? Yeah, it's it's a it's a tricky one. I don't know mm. how I don't know how people are going to get around that because mm. you're killing your own fun. Yeah. And then complaining that there's nothing fun to do. But yeah. you, you are the reason for that. Yeah, you're saying, hey, I'm going to complete this game as fast and efficiently as possible. And then when that happens, you're thinking, wow, that was quite fast. I'm like, yeah, you made it fast. Yeah, <laughs> it didn't have to be that fast. Just enjoy it. Yeah, you achieved. If you want to speedrun an MMORPG, sweet. Start start world records. Start speedrun records. RuneScape has a Tutorial yeah. Island speedrun record. You want to speedrun yeah, New does. World? Cool, go for it. But don't speedrun it and then sit and go. It's like watching a film on fast forward, getting to the end of the film and going, what now? Yeah, yeah. No, that, that, that is yeah. spot on. There's there's no real way around that, though, is there? Because <laughs> um, like, if you stop the player doing that, they're going to get mm. angry because there mm. are some people that want to spend, like, I don't know, a couple of hours power leveling. Mm. So taking that away from them, it just makes them angry. But... Yeah, you can't tell the player that they're having fun wrong. But when yeah. the player, yeah, when the player says, "Hey, I've I've done your game as fast as I can. There's no more game left," you can say to them, "Well, there was loads of game. You actively chose to skip it." 
Yeah, you, you, you've skipped the whole thing. You, like, you can't tell someone... You, you can't save people from themselves. You're right. You can't no. say you're having fun wrong. Yeah. But it, it is going to limit the amount of fun that you have. You, you've, ex you've expended all your fun at once. Yeah. So, so what's the plot of... Um, I th think I know it. What's the plot of New World? You've played New World. What's the plot? I... So it's... <laughs> <clears throat> So, I mean, naturally, I paid full attention to all of that and wasn't just following you around throwing spears at you. Um, something to do with Scary Island. People want to go there. People said don't go there. People still went there. Now we're on Scary Island. Island scarier than we thought. And now we've got to beat the scary to get off the island or something. Be pretty much spot on. Yeah. Absolute evil conquistadors. Um, I don't even get... I, I know they've gone with the Spanish conquistador demographic and the whole look and the aesthetic yeah I, there's no actual plot reason to specifically do that they, they could have gone with anything else but that's what they chose to go with that's fine uh evil island don't go to it we go to it get washed up evil island stay live it can't be that evil if when you arrive there's already like three major factions and civilizations living and surviving and thriving here's the thing I believe these civilizations were the ones that went there before you. Because the whole kind of plot of it seems to be history repeats itself, right? Mm -hmm. People are going to steal this power, get consumed by the power, and they stay there and become defenders of it. That, that's kind of what I got from it. Yep. Now, I believe each faction is a previous generation, which is why you've got, like, the Romans, uh, like, the Roman-themed villages. And then you've got the, the Conquistador-themed villages and the, like, the, the, the Japanese kind of, like, Genji-style... Um, I never actually like found pagodas. those in the game, but that sounds awesome. They are end game. Uh, oh. I did get there. I did get one shot. Uh, <laughs> but it was cool. It was cool while, I, while it lasted. Mm -hmm. It looked really nice. But... Yeah, it looks good. And it looks fun. And you, you, you turn up, you play, you level up, you, you kill some stuff. And then that's yep. kind of it. They're going to need to go somewhere with it. They're going to need to add some bosses to it. They're going to need to add a storyline to it. Because all, all the good MMORPGs have a storyline. People yeah. may not know it, but they do. Guild Wars 2 has yes. a great storyline. Elder Scrolls Online has a story. RuneScape has a storyline. No one cares about yeah. what it is, but it is there. You yeah. can read about it and follow it, and the quests are there. Yeah, it's. in fact, I was saying this to someone. We were in a dev meeting the other day, and a just random, you know, off-topic. We were like... Hmm. Um, I, I was saying how I'd sat there and watched an hour-long video about the lore of the Flood from Halo. And he says to me, he's like, what, why is, why is the, the Flood got lore? I was like, what, what do you mean? He was like, Halo doesn't have lore, does it? <laughs> I was like, are you mad? I was like, Halo's got so much lore, so much story. And everyone in the chat was just like, really? The name of the game is Halo, which is the physical Halo, which is like yeah. a space weapon. That's kind of... Honestly, if, if you haven't looked into the lore of Halo and you're into sci-fi, yeah. you will get dragged down a rabbit hole. It's awesome. Honestly, it's incredible. From what I remember, the actual Halos themselves, when activated, was some kind of weapon that wiped out all life in the yeah, galaxy. Yeah, it, it's a it? big foreigner weapon. And mm. um, it turns out that Zeta Halo, that, that you know, which is mm. the Halo that you were on, yeah. was a, an inactive weapon waiting to be activated. And that's why... And a lot of people don't know this. That's why at the end of Halo 3, everything's yeah. falling apart as you're driving the war targets. Because... The, the weapon's activating and you, you've got to get off the weapon. Yeah. But there's loads of people that when you say that to them, they're like, oh, that makes sense. It's like, you just didn't listen, did you? Yeah. Like, it's the whole plot. But is that a problem with MMORPGs? They didn't listen. An MMORPG yeah. is a genre that you can play without paying any attention to the story. You can't yes. read The Lord of the Rings without paying attention to the story. Yeah. It literally is the story. Yeah. You can't watch Breaking Bad without paying attention to the story. But no. you can play an MMO without paying yep. attention to the story. You can play it purely mechanically. Do you know what the problem is, though? They made cutscenes skippable because people wanted to skip them. And now that now that cutscenes are all skippable, well, everyone's skipping them because it's like, well, I, I could waste 30 seconds watching this. I think there should be main story cutscenes that aren't skippable in every game. Just to, to force important information on the player, but allowing side quests and that to be, you know, skipped. What about once, I just you, feel it's... once you've watched them once or twice, you then don't need to watch them again? Exactly. I, I think you should be able to skip them after watching them once. For example, um, WoW did this with a lot of things. Because um, I can see my and chat it, is already saying the Praetorium from Final Fantasy XIV. The Praetorium is like a 45-minute dungeon, and it's five oh, minutes it of gameplay and 40 minutes of cutscenes. No. It's great when I get it on the... When I get the Praetorium on any kind of roulette, I'm thinking, sweet, I can go make a cup of tea for like half an hour, come back and just do a boss. Yeah. Mm. So... It, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because WoW did this with a lot of things. They 
WoW became a very alt-centric game, you know, like, when we were going into a raid, like, when I was raiding, we'd have to have three to four classes maxed out so that we could swap to them when the new patch comes out. It's like, what's going to be meta next patch? Don't know. Just get, spread the board, you know, put, put all your cards on the table, and you, you'll, you'll hit it with one of them, you know, you'll be good with yeah. one of your four classes. And it became such an alt-centric thing. It was like, well, you can only have mining and blacksmithing, but they're really quick to level up, but really expensive. And it's like, well, I'll just make another alt and have two more professions. And then yeah. you ended up just having all these alts that you had to level. And so that, then they had to make the game alt-friendly and say, well, you now get 70% more XP. Uh, you can now skip making your garrison altogether. Your garrison's just there uh, in Warlords of Draenor. And yeah. it got to the point where it was like, okay, so now you've not made it easier for someone with an alt. You've now made it that if they haven't got an alt, they're wasting time. It, it's now like, oh, your alt can be ready in a day. Why don't you have one? Yeah. And it, it's kind of spiraled and snowballed really quickly to the point that if you were a raid and you hadn't got an alt, it was just like, what are you doing? Like, why are, haven't you got a maxed alt? There are certain genres of games that work absolutely fine without story and they don't necessarily need it. I yeah. mean, Unreal Tournament has a story. No one cares. Yeah. It's just to shoot other people. It's great. Uh, there are games that need the story because I suppose it's a case of does the story drive the action forward? So Uncharted. Uncharted is a game where the story is the reason the action happens. You go to this yes. because the plot demands you go there. You go to this because the plot demands you go there. You actually need to understand the story to get the relevance of the action behind it. With an MMORPG... Yeah. Is it the story driving the action forward, or is it the action driving the story? Are the developers saying, hey, we really need a big boss. We need a, a situation like this, a mechanic like this. Therefore, yeah. we should write a story that facilitates this. Which you can is... always tell when they've done that as well. Hmm. You can always tell when they've done yeah. that. Uh, if main, main thing, if the players aren't hyped about the announcement of this boss, it's because yeah. they don't know what it is. They don't care what it is. You've yeah. just shoehorned it in there. Spot on. And um, the RuneScape is... They do 50-50, really, don't they? So, yeah. like, for example, when they had the God Wars dungeon bosses, people are so hyped. We know uh, who like they are, we know what they yeah. represent, and they, they relate to the story. They are yes. the avatars of the gods that we already know about because they've already been involved a lot. Yeah, but when they had something like, is it Araxi, the spider? Yeah. Everyone's was... just like, nah. It's, it's like, a big boss. Big spider. New... Yeah, they, yeah, they cared about Araxi because it dropped the new... Best yeah. in slot weapons. We need to add a new best in slot weapon. God, somebody come up with a boss quick. Yeah, if they and, didn't, uh... <laughs> if, it, if, it, if, if that didn't drop the best in slot weapons, it would be dead content within like two weeks. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. No, I, you, you're spot on with that. So when we talk about the greatest MMORPG of all time, one aspect could be story within an MMORPG. Yeah. Which which MMORPG? Did story the best? Because people obviously Ooh. people often say, "Oh, the older ones are better." Not necessarily, because one of the oldest MMORPGs yeah. of all time is uh, the Legends of Kazmai, or uh, Legends of Future Past, or Meridian Fifty Nine, and stuff like that. And they were just kind of open world exploration stuff. And yes, you had various characters and NPCs, but there was no actual plot or story. So, which MMORPG had a story? that people actually cared about. And unfortunately, I think it might be World of Warcraft up to Wrath of the Lich King. Yeah, World of Warcraft. But I'd say if we had to skip World of Warcraft, mm. I, I've got I've got one that people are probably immediately going to be like, no, that's wrong. But but bear with me and think about the story, not the gameplay. Mm -hmm. Arcage. I, I really, really enjoyed the story of Arcage. I skipped through it the first time. And then second time round, I've got no friends on to play with. So I was just like, I'll just take my time. Okay. Honestly, really enjoyable. Okay. And Let's I couldn't it. tell you what the overarching story of it was. Yeah. But it's lots of little, like, series of quests. And it, it was just really good. Loki says, I don't remember the story of Arcade. I just remember the sailing. Yeah, we used yeah. to just go around pirating. Because I actually really enjoyed the plot and the idea behind Skyforge. The whole mm. being, being a god. You are a demigod. You must become a full god by doing good stuff for people. That's actually quite a good idea. Um, it's but, unique. Yeah, the, the gameplay itself didn't necessarily lend itself to it. Elder Scrolls Online, everyone is the chosen one. Guild Wars 2 had a decent story yeah. about the dragons and stuff. Final Fantasy XIV has got a pretty good one up to Heaven's Ward and stuff. But yeah, there's there's a lot of MMORPGs now that do tell good stories. And yeah. I think the reason... You said earlier, you know, people need to know who the boss is and care. They need to know why it's mm -hmm. there. There is this problem in writing, and it's especially prevalent in TV and film writing. You You build up the big bad guy, 
you kill the big bad guy, where do you go? Well, the only answer is, well, to hack writers, you build up the next big bad guy. And WoW I, suffers from yeah, that. Yeah, WoW suffers. I saw it most in the TV show Supernatural. I love Supernatural. Okay. I think it's brilliant. Uh, have you seen Supernatural? I, I believe I've seen some episodes of it. Okay, so it was but written... I've never, never followed it, yeah. Oh, you, to be honest, you only need to watch the first five seasons. It was written okay. originally by Eric Kripke as a five-season thing. So the first five seasons are two brothers effectively working their way up to kill Satan, to kill the devil. Yeah. And at the end of the five seasons, they do it. And then the sixth season got announced, and they were like, where do we go from here? Oh, we yeah. can kill these things. And then... They killed them, and then seventh season, oh, we can kill these things. And it's it's power creep every time. Yeah. And you find it very, very hard to actually care about the next big bad if you already know in your mind the big bad after it is going to be bigger and badder. And then again and again and again and again uh, and again. It's it, it's one of the things. Once you start running on this treadmill, it's very hard to stop. And if you start off this way, your game or series has to continue that way. Uh, otherwise... You're going to get to a point where it's so lackluster and yeah. unimportant that just nobody cares. And, like, RuneScape handles it really well. Yeah. They, they've they got lots of minions of the the, the gods that you go and mm -hmm. fight out. Like, instead of uh, Zamorak, you never go and kill Zamorak no. himself. You, like, you'll go and kill T Tithkaroth. Krill, is it Krill the... Tusaroth, yeah, the avatar of Zamorak. That's the one. And then Sliske, you'll go and try and deal with Sliske and all that. Like, you, you deal with all the minions of them, but they mm. still feel impactful. And they're never any more powerful than the last. No. They're yeah. just more relevant at the time to the, to the sort of story at hand. And when you look at the, the story beats and the story writing, it does follow a curve. You, you can build something up to a point, And when it gets to the point, yeah. that's the climax. And then that's the end of the story. That's mm -hmm. it happens. You wrap up the end of the story and the story is done. You, you build up Lord of the Rings, the huge big fights at the end. You destroy the ring, the story is done. Yeah. It's not, we've destroyed the ring, but, oh, there's a worse thing out there in the world. Yeah. That's that's fatigue for the audience. They've spent all their emotional energy and investment yeah. in this thing. Once this thing is done, let the audience chill for a bit. And I think World of yeah. Warcraft did it exceptionally well with Wrath of the Lich King. The Burning yeah. Crusade builds up to something. Wrath of the Lich King builds up to something. We kill the Lich King, and then there's something worse. And then there's something worse and worse. And I'm like, eventually, you're just going to have to be like, right, I don't care about the next worst thing. And this is this is something that I was looking into with WoW. I think they, they got themselves truly stuck on that treadmill. Like, yeah. they were running full pace. Yeah. And I noticed in recent expansions, they're, they're setting a lot of seeds for future villains. Um, so starting at around Cataclysm, actually, because they realise that they're running out of... By Cataclysm, they'd run out of lore from the, the Warcraft games. They, yeah. You know, that whole backlog was gone. They just blew through it. And that's literally why they blew the world up. They were like, okay, yeah. cool, let's just blow the world up and rewrite what we want to rewrite. Yeah, exactly. We need, we've need we got these seven zones that are so heavily tied to this piece of lore that we've expend, like, expended now. What do we do with it? Like, that's just dead zones. So, so mm. this is why they, like you say, blew the world up, started again. Mm. And it's a shame because i think in the next few expansions blizzard would really start to use this new backlog that they've yeah. built up and you i can, don't think they'll get there though <laughs> you, you can build up a second scary villain but you don't do At the it same time every single expansion you do it over no. a couple of expansions i mean yeah taking into account everything mainly tv and films who do you think the best villain of all time is not necessarily MMORPGs, just the Ooh. best villain because they are almost always three dimensional characters. They are never just evil for the sake of being evil. You can always understand why they're doing it. So, who's the best villain and how long does it build them up? Question for the chat as well who's the best villain? And I've got That's two answers. A tough one, yeah. Because hmm. a lot of people I'm in the chat are saying Dolores Umbridge from Harry Potter. And uh, yeah, you know what? Um, Umbridge is a good reason because it's not a, a fictional, it's not a fantasy villain. You know people like Umbridge. You know teachers like this power hungry madman. Yeah, I'm, I'm struggling with. Now, the, the one that I'm thinking is Gus from Breaking Bad. Yes, that's my choice as well. That is Was exactly <laughs> my choice. Gus from Breaking Bad. Perfect. Holy hell. Oh, you, you related to him and you felt for him in a certain way, yeah, but you were yeah. also like, I'm supposed to hate this dude. Yeah, you like, I, I should hate him. And he's so normal. 
And that's yeah. why he's so scary. You you see him having lunch with Walter. You see him sharing dinner. You see him going down to, to chat and to have a good time and to be human. And then when he does these horrific things, it's not it's a, a monster. It's a flick of a switch, though, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It's not a monster. It's a human yeah. being being monstrous. Magneto yeah. was a good one as well. Again, not a monster. Someone That's that you the can best relate writing to. for a villain. Yeah, which is when why it's Arthur's... showing that they they're a person that does bad things. They're yeah. not they're not that person. Yeah, it's kind of it's a hard one, but it's it's so if they do it right, it's so well done. Yeah, most of the people in Game of Thrones as well. Yeah, a lot exactly. of the, the the villains, you know, the grey characters. Yeah. That, that you perceive as a villain. Yeah. So well written. Yeah. Khan like, from Star um, Trek as well. Everything. In the, yeah, um, yeah the, the Walter, Walter Frey, all of them, all the Walter evil Frey, ones. Yeah. The Lannisters, they're not, the best villains are heroes in their own story. Yes. That's what it is. And Absolutely. I think that what Warcraft did incredibly well was Arthas was a hero in his yes. own story. And we just... You know what, that's a, yeah, that's a, that would be my second one, I'd say. Yeah, what, Arthas. Arthas... Yeah, hands down. Because he was a hero in his own story. Yeah. Death, Deathwing was never a hero in their own story. No, Deathwing knew that he was just trashing everything. Yeah, and then you look yeah. at all of the... I mean, what's the big bad now? The Jailer um, in... Yeah. <laughs> like, your face just didn't even change. Like, no emotional reaction yeah. to the Jailer whatsoever. Illidan, though. They tried to do it with Illidan, didn't they? Illidan. They tried to force yeah. it, though. Yeah. Illidan in the first one was this big evil dude, you know? Like, yeah. he was the monster. But then in Legion, they're like, let's have a redemption arc for the guy who died and we've just brought back. And it's yep. like... What? People are saying Thanos in the chat as well. Thanos. The yeah, I've seen a lot that, of Thanos. Yeah, he's not... If if you were to play a villain's story as the main story, they would look like a hero from their point of view. Yeah. And that's what we need. And that's... How many MMORPGs do that? Not many. How, how many MMORPGs do we have? And do people even care? Because we already discussed later that people don't care about the plot. How many MMORPGs have stories where the big bad villains or the people you fight are also heroes. Relatable as well. Final yeah. Fantasy XIV does it a lot. Final Fantasy XIV does it very, very well. They don't put an evil guy in there for no reason. He's evil no. with intention. Even the um, the first one, Gaius, Gaius Van Belzar, in the, the main retail version of the game, even he thinks he's doing the right thing. Yeah. And I think that comes down to the story writing. Mm. So if you add a character in and you're like, here's black, here's white. Yeah. Like, these are the These are the teams. It's from day one. It's not really a surprise because you're thinking of him in that way. If you add everybody as a grey character and let them develop as the story does, yeah, you're you're catching everybody by surprise because not even you knew that they were going to do that until yeah. you decided later down the line. Yeah. I've Spot. seen a lot of people say, "Oh, hang on, who who were they saying?" Um, Garrosh Hellscream from World of Warcraft as well. Yes, yes, um, they in, did him dirty. Yeah, I mean, even in in RuneScape, you had the Saradomen and Zamorak that were meant to be this <laughs> kind of archetypical good and bad. Saradomen ends up being a dick. Yeah. Saradomen ends up being so... I was like, when I was a kid, I was a full-on Saradomen supporter. I was like, yes, yeah, you know, this too. guy is spot on. This guy is righteous. And then I start to look at what he's actually doing, and I'm thinking, this guy is just arrogant. Yeah. This guy is selfish. Yeah. It's... I, I like that they do that as well. I mean, that that's another fun... It's not really a trope at the moment, yeah. but, we're, you know, having the good guy, bad guy, and role swapping. Yeah. Just swapping the roles out. I, I like when that when they do that. Yeah, when it's... they make... As long as they make decisions that reference themselves. So, to bring this back, which MMORPG do we think has done well enough with story? Because if we're talking about the greatest MMO of all time, I don't even... I have to research this. I wonder what the first MMO to actually have an established story was. I'd have to look back into Ooh. this. Because a lot of yeah. them just existed as... Sandbox. Kind of sandbox games. You had Meridian 59. Yeah. I know that it's got quests, but does it have a story? Ultima definitely did. EverQuest would have done because that had a, a story to yeah. it. I'd have to work out which one had it. That, that'd be an interesting Because it's not, it's not like a, a switch. It's it's not this game had no story. This game has all the story. It's, it's this a progression. Game, yeah, has like a couple of quests that link together. Is that a story? This game has a couple of quests that kind of follow all the way on. Is that a story? Is it Asheron's Call? Is it the original Neverwinter? Back on the AOL ones that we've just had in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. You would say that, Classic that, WoW has lore rather than a story. Well, yeah. Would you say Classic WoW has lore more than a story? I, 
I suppose, yeah. And I guess the, mm. the difference between lore and a story is lore's just kind of drip fed to you as tiny bits of mm. here here are facts. Put these facts together. Uh yeah, I, I suppose it didn't have much of a story until I suppose mm. the story is relevant to how much the actual player's involved in it. Because yeah. if, if you're playing an MMORPG and a random NPC comes up to you and says, Oh, the king is being attacked and then you're just chopping a tree and then someone else comes up and goes, the king is dead, and then you continue chopping oh, oh, a tree and cool. someone goes, the king has been replaced by somebody else. You don't care. But if you no. were actually in the castle and you saw the king being attacked, killed, and usurped, you'd be like, right, I'm involved in the story. Yeah, like, yeah. No, I, c I completely agree with that. that it, I guess it really does matter how much you're involved in it. Yeah. Well, is story relevant hmm. to how much the player is actually actively experiencing the story beats? Yeah. I mean, there's no yeah, right to I answer. suppose if you... No, it's a thought-provoking question, though, because if you're not involved, it's just law. Yeah. You're being told something. If you're... But that's a tricky one, because story in a book, you're not involved in it. You're, it... you're just this bystander. So it's, it's a real flipped question, isn't it, really? Could it be that the law is what's happened and the story is what's happening? Yeah, so, I, I suppose. Yeah, the lore is all the stuff that's happened before, and the story is what's happening to you and to everyone else around you now. Mm, yeah. And there's True. The, again, it, it might not be right, it might not be wrong. Normally, simple sayings like that don't always apply, but it sounds, it's, it's a nice sound bite to be able yeah, to exactly. say. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's a good little thing to say. <laughs> yeah. Someone's just said, How do you get a million people involved in the story of your MMO? And I suppose that's another good point. If you're. If everybody's the cho you know, the kind of if everybody's uh, if everybody's a hero, nobody's a hero kind yep. of thing. Yep. That that also does play into it because if you keep people far enough away from the hero trope, it's a bit meaningless. I I've often believed lot. that instead of instead of being the chosen one, a player should be able to be in a position where they choose to be the one. As in, it's not fate or it's not some kind of yeah you grand you're proving yourself. It's Anyone could have done this, but you're yeah. the person that did. Anyone could yes. have solved this. It, it doesn't. It's not going to take a, a mythical legend to do it. It's just going to take someone standing up and doing something. So if yeah. you get a million people involved and you say, right, it's we need someone to do this. You just happen to be here. Are you going to be able to do it? Yeah, that I like. I like that method of doing it. Mm. It um, feels more natural. Yeah. I, who did it? Where you were literally a god. Um, not not Skyforge. It was um, I think it was it was Legion in WoW actually, where everybody's picked up the uh, the artifact weapons. Mm -hmm. Was that Legion or was that Battle for Azeroth? Le Legion was the artifact weapons. Battle Legion. for Azeroth with the heart of Azeroth necklace. Yeah, and you've got everybody running around with Illidan's war glaives. You've got everybody running around with Uther's sword, and it's just like it felt really really unnatural. Yeah, and just just odd. Notice I wasn't how, a fan of that. Notice how they're running around with Uther's sword, not their own sword that is relevant and important to exactly. them. Exactly. I've, yeah. I've really believed that, yeah, the idea of legendary weapons is awesome and really, really cool, but I've not yet seen an MMO or I've not seen one do it well, or any kind of game really, where you can use your own weapons so much it becomes legendary to you. I, I think that's probably avoided for a few reasons. Because one of your weapons would just permanently be better than all the rest. They did have it on original Warcraft, where when you crafted a weapon, it actually showed who crafted it originally, didn't it? Yes. So if, I, yeah, if a famous like player that. made a weapon and then sold it, that weapon would become legendary, not necessarily we're doing from that. damage, but from yeah. connection. Yeah, we're, we're doing exactly that. We, we've got a, a really good way to save lots of metadata to weapons and okay. have them tradable and and whatnot. So this is just, for those who don't know what metadata is, it's just arbitrary, non-pre-programmed data. So, for example, a player's name saying it was crafted by X, um, it was crafted on this date, uh, at, at this location. And, for example, let's say that it was crafted at a location that later got destroyed in the story. You know that this was like pre-cataclysm and, and stuff like that. Lots of really cool little little things. It doesn't make the weapon any more powerful, but people mm. will look at that and be like, damn, that's like a that's a pre cataclysmic yeah. weapon or something. And it's quite it's so, quite nice to have that. So is the answer to how do you get a million people involved in the story? Is it that you don't let them get involved in the story? Is it that you let them get involved in the law? Because making uh, the 
the weapon isn't necessarily part of anyone's story. It's no, part of it's the lore side... of the world now. Yeah, it's you're, you're changing the world through a side effect of something that you've done. Yeah. Like, it doesn't drastically change the world. You know, all you've done is created a sword, but mm. your name's on that sword. Everyone knows you made that. They know when you made that. Yeah. And they know that it was you that did it. So yeah. it's like how in certain you've games, left a mark on it. Yeah, certain games when they have clan fights or battles, they have statues of those clans put up in the yeah. game. Suddenly, that it's not necessarily part of the story because you can go your entire game without ever bumping into it. Yeah, but it's now part of the lore. Yeah, I, I actually, I really like that as a, as a method of telling story that's not canon yeah, it's really not, it's, it's you almost know, it's... like the dark souls level of telling telling stories it's there if you look for it but it's mm -hmm. not going to be it's not actually relevant to anything yeah. that you're doing you can go through all of dark souls without being aware of the story at all mm. or you can get involved with it and look for it as well yeah it's wow did this uh and they did it once and it annoyed me that it was only a one-time thing mm -hmm. the arena championships happened and the winner was a team called bleach bones okay and they added an item in the game called Bleached Bones. Okay. And then they added a lot of story that, that this team of people had ga um, gathered their name based off wearing necklaces of these bleached bones and stuff. And it's just like such a small thing that's nothing to do with actual story, but it, it adds to the world. Because yeah. now when you're seeing like banners popping up about Bleach Bones winning uh, a grand tournament and that, it's like, well, there's story to it, even though it's not really. Yeah, and so they, they just skipped over it. It's a question of how much law is involved, but then, of course, as a as a developer, it's that eternal question of we were discussing earlier how almost no one cares about the story and the law in MMORPGs. Yeah. How much effort do you put into something you know a lot of people are going to skip yeah. over? Yeah, effort versus payoff. Yeah. yeah, it's it is a tricky one because it, it's a hard balance. Mm. It it's really. Um... It's a tough one to balance, it is. Yeah. And I, I don't know the answer to that. No, no one does. So we're talking about the most, the greatest MMORPG of all time, and sometimes greatest means most influential. And I used to teach yeah. martial arts, and people would say to me, you know, is Bruce Lee the greatest martial artist of all time? And I'd say, I don't know if he's the greatest, but he's definitely one of the most influential. Yeah. Because without, he kick-started a whole movement of interest in the West in the 1970s yeah. of martial arts what mmorpg was the most influential because a lot of people go straight to you know everquest or world of warcraft but what do you think what, what's the most influential same question to the chat as well the most influential no. mmorpg i never played it but mm -hmm. i would say ultima okay uh, i think ultima <laughs> kick-started the whole mmo franchise really okay and I, i'd say that would be that, that would easily be the most influential because look how many follows. Yeah, I mean, look, we, we've got after. Ultima Online and EverQuest in the yeah. chat are just absolutely fighting against each other. And it, the amazing thing is Dream World. <laughs> the amazing thing is that Ultima and EverQuest were for so many years at loggerheads with each other and both competing yeah. for that top spot and both taking it and taking it back and taking it back and taking it back. Yeah. Ultima and EverQuest really did start this MMO rivalry. Yeah, we've got Fancy Star. Yeah, Fancy Star, that again, another big one. Yeah. Uh, that went to, I think it went to Sega at some point as well. Yeah. You can play it on uh, some of the original, I think it was a Dreamcast MMO. Um, but it, it was oh, wow. more like a, an, it was an instance style. It was almost like Warframe, but really, 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 really old. Yeah. Right, okay, yeah. Yeah, the, I'm getting a lot of Ultima Online in my chat. Yeah. Um, Ultima. I mean, people say, you know, World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft was the most influential. It, it can't be discounted because if Ultima, no. if Ultima started something, and if EverQuest started to refine it, did World of Warcraft bring it to the masses? That, that's a tough one as well because it, it is a lot about adoption, isn't it? Like, yeah. nobody wants to be. What is it? Everybody wants to be first to be second. Yeah. Because um, the people who are first often make the most mistakes. Yeah, and, then the people and you who don't come, need to make those. Correct. And the people who come second can say, right, I can see what you've done. I'm going to make it better. Because World of Warcraft, one thing I think it nailed was cultural relevance. And it did this yes. through advertising and marketing. A lot of people remember the Mr. T World of Warcraft advert. Oh, my God, yes. Yeah, Vern they, Troyer as well. Yeah, Vern Troyer. They're, uh, Chuck oh, Norris. I forgot about that. Chuck Norris. Yeah. Um, who else was loads. there? There was loads. There was Ozzy Osbourne. Loads. Ozzy Osbourne did it. Yeah, Prince of Darkness. Yeah. 
And and then also, probably the most influential South Park episode of all time, World of Warcraft South Park episode. Yeah. 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 I mean, here's the thing. Even people who have never watched South Park have watched that episode if they played WoW because they've heard it so much they're like, for God's sake, I'll just watch yeah. it. Yep. So and people who have never played World of Warcraft have watched World of Warcraft in the episode. And I think yeah. World of Warcraft managed to ride this cultural wave at exactly the right time. The the conditions yeah. were perfect. The fact it, that they got yeah. all the celebrities, all of the you know, all the marketing and the most popular adult TV show in the world at the time. Yeah, I, I think they they got it at the peak of uh, at the start of like celebrity advertising. Yeah. I, as silly as that sounds, it wasn't such a big thing for common commercial products to do at the time. No. It was it was just sort of picking up that you know the getting big celebrities meant something, even if they were nothing to do with said product. Yeah, and I, they definitely rode that wave. I only and think, it, it yeah. paid off big time. The only only franchise they could have really got to make it bigger would have been The Simpsons. If World of Warcraft managed to get yeah. The Simpsons in like the late nineties, early two thousands, it would have been insane for them. Oh God, yeah, easily. It really would have. So, yeah, when we talk hmm. about the greatest MMORPG of all time, Ultima and EverQuest started this rivalry, this battle. World of Warcraft took the idea of a franchise, took the idea of marketing it, because Warcraft marketed itself not just to people who liked games, but to people who wanted to be part of a subculture. Yes, and this this kind of plays back to something you said in your video today, because mm. I, I took a few notes on this, because I thought mm. they were interesting. For, like, forced group content... Now, I, I think the first MMOs really brought people together because it literally forced you to come together. Yep. Like, you, you had to be part of a group. You had to make yourself fit in, which wasn't too hard to do in an MMO, you know. Say you're a socially awkward person in, in real life. You could quite easily get yourself into a group and, like, a little family or a guild in, in WoW, and you, you could stick it out. It was, it was such a strange time to... Yeah. People don't like it now because it's mm. it's forced. So, you know, mm. they've, they've kind of dropped that. That's off the radar now. I've, but I think that's uh, one of the things that's missing. I really do. Well, I have a theory relating to that. And you can let me know what you think about this. And people in the chat can think, say what you think about this. The early game MMORPGs were not just games. They were chat rooms. Yeah. And at the time, yes. the chat room, the Internet Relay Chat or IRCs and forums were still relatively new. They were still novel. So EverQuest is just a really, really pretty chat room. Ultimate yeah. was a phenomenally pretty chat room. Um, RuneScape, for the long time, Bank Standing was just a really nice gamified chat yeah. room. Club Penguin, you know, Habbo Hotel, gamified chat rooms. And what then happened yeah. was actual chat rooms came along or social media came along with Bebo, with MySpace, with Facebook. And it took over that aspect from the MMORPG. It basically said, hey, you don't need to worry about, you know, F fulfilling the social facilitator role anymore we've got that we've got all the tools for that you can just worry about being a game and then actually yeah. people realize the mmorpg wasn't just a game it was a yeah. a social facilitator and once that aspect had been removed people were forced to look at the game and realize this isn't as good as i remember yeah no you i think you're absolutely spot on with that let me let me think what was it for me that was the real the real killer. I, I think have this is where role playing tools really come into MMOs as well. Yep. Have you need to have tons of role playing tools. Think about how much time you even if you don't class yourself as a role player in RuneScape, you were stood around emoting at people, following them, dancing with them and just yeah. messing about. Straight up. Even if you even if you don't want to admit it, you did it. And yeah. if you weren't doing that, what else would you be doing? Yeah, you would right-click on someone and follow. They would right-click on you and follow. You do that weird box step dance around each yeah. other. And why would the you, Irish jig. Yeah, why, yeah. why would you do that? You would do that because it was a fun thing to do. And then yeah. you realise that actually you, you were using the gamification to yeah. enhance the chat room aspect. If you removed yeah. the socialisation from all MMORPGs, what gameplay would be left? That's actually a really good question yeah. we could look at. Hang on, I'm and now. Write it down because I think this um, what I'm about to say to you as well might might be a, a, a big thing uh, and i don't know which, which sort of topic this would filter into mm -hmm. but one of the biggest things that role playing in mmos does is fills the gap where you would have logged out absolutely and 
if you as if as a game developer, if you can fill that gap, say like I'm I've been doing some PvP in the morning on on you know a Saturday and la so, uh, Saturday night is raid time. Well, I'm gonna log off. I'm gonna go get a McDonald's or whatever and you know just chill for a bit. Or I could stand around with my friends, not role playing, but just chatting in just game. Chatting. Yeah. And if, if you as a developer have managed to fill that gap, that's a time where they're not logging into another game. It's where they're not spinning up CSGO to go and, you know, shoot some people and whatever. <laughs> Hang on, I've just seen Shogun in the chat. <laughs> Shogun just said, when we released NXT for RuneScape, which was the next client, which I think used the next I, level I of HTML. I remember it, yeah. Beautiful water. The dance mechanic was technically a bug, so we had to re-add the bug as a feature. I heard this. I I heard this a while back, and I think it was Mod Jack Mob that was telling me. Brilliant. Um that, that it was re added because it's slightly different. You, I, I remember them saying they had to go through like eight iterations of re-breaking it to get it to work exactly how it did. Yeah. And it's now it was now so much less efficient because it had to do checks for the bug <laughs> that it was just, it was like a bizarre, bizarre scenario. That to... actually reminds me. Oh, by the way, if you're in the chat, by the way, if you're watching this podcast, we're going to go off on tangents all the time. This is like the Tangent yeah. Tavern, all right? And that is potentially a good name. That's a good name. That actually. is a good name. This is the Tangent Tavern. We're going to go off on tangents. Most famous bug in a video game of all time, Space Invaders. Do you ever play Space Invaders? I have played it, but I didn't know that there was a... Oh. Space Invaders was is this meant... the edge of the screen bug? Nope. This is the speed bug. You know how oh. the Space Invaders speed up as there are less ships left? Yeah. It wasn't meant to happen. The only reason it goes slow is because the original hardware was not fast enough to render all of the ships. And no. As you destroy the ships, and there's it fewer... It just the FPS. Yeah, and there's fewer sprites for it to render, it goes quicker. And when they started playing it, they were like, hang on, this is progressive overload of difficulty. The more ships you shoot, That's the faster amazing. it gets. And they just left it in. They were like, this is brilliant. Just leave this in, because it's progression. Oh, God. In fact, Locust just pointed out another bug that was fantastic it's no this didn't add for for good game progress and I'm, I'm sure some people might remember this if you played wow during warlords of draenor i think it was or it might have been battle for azeroth does anyone remember the image in chat bug because that was my favorite bug of all time in any game and i think mm -hmm. I, I don't think i've mentioned this one to you yet josh but basically you had, yes, it was Warlords of Draenor because it was to do with the followers that you could have for your garrison. Okay. Now, this was the first thing that you could link in chat as an item that had a picture after it. Now, you can edit the metadata of linked items so that you could theoretically say to someone, hey, do you want to get this item with these six gems in even though you couldn't get them, right? So okay. you were basically making up item metadata. Well, no, this, this item had image metadata and it was the first one. So you could get anything in the game files, any resolution, and put it in this metadata. So now, Josh, this was a 16 by 16 image that didn't have like any sort of clamp on the size of it. Okay. So you could get a 4K splash screen and just decimate everybody's screens. Because it would overlay everything. And it would try and render it in the text box. No, it would render it, it everywhere. Oh. The whole... So it renders it bottom left corner outwards, which is where the chat was. So it would fill the entire screen. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, and someone, someone's, someone's already got exactly what I was getting at here. So yeah. we found out about this, me and Locust did, and we were messing around with it. Okay. And then we found out there's a, a Blizzard GM or Game Master icon that was 32 by 16, right? Which fit perfectly in the chat. So what I did is I started DMing people with the image of the, the Blizzard uh, symbol after my name, messaging them saying, like, naughty, naughty boy, and stuff like that. And the, I was just watching bots log out so quickly. It was hilarious. Because you were convinced All thinking you they'd got done over by a GM. Yeah, it was... That that was hilarious, though, because there was... At the time, I believe there was a world race going on, a world okay. first race for, um, you know, first killing raids and whatever. Yeah. And people kept whispering... The, the top raiders with massive <laughs> just like they got a, a 4k image of like a wheelchair i don't know why it was in the game files it was for like some accessibility thing that they you know then scaled way down massive wheelchair on the screen just wiped the entire raid because the heel is now dead it was incredible brilliant someone's just commented in chat and this is a this is a story i did know but i've you just reminded me of thank you uh you ever played the original grand theft auto back on playstation one 
Yes. You know, it's kind of like top down bird's eye view driving around. Yes. Originally, that had a really solid story and a really solid plot. And when you committed a crime, the police were meant to arrive really quickly, arrest you, Mm -hmm. and then you had to try and do it again. So you were meant to try and do the game without becoming a criminal. But the beta testers enjoyed running away from the police more than they enjoyed actually playing the game. So they said, you know what, let's just let's just add in the police as a major mechanic into the game. And that's why we've got the Grand Theft Auto that we know nowadays, because it was beta testers messing around with it that enjoyed that. Oh, Gandhi in Civilization. Do you ever play Civilization with Gandhi nuking you? No, but I did hear about this. I watched a video on this. Um, this is going back a few years now. Yeah. So I, you feel free to retell the story. But Yeah, I mean, do you know why it happened? Because you, you can tell it if you want to. No, I don't, I don't know why it happened. Oh, so all of the enemies in Civilization have an aggression stat. And, mm-hmm. you know, it goes from like, you know, 10 to, to from zero where they don't hurt you at all, all the yeah. way up to 10, you know, where they're super aggressive and try and kill you all the time. And what would happen with when you advance to your final civilization, especially if you advance through like a culture or a science bit, you would all the enemies would have their aggression lowered by one. Because what was meant to happen is you played the game as you right. and your enemies got advanced. They didn't want to kill you as much, but they forgot to change it. So what happens was. Gandhi's aggression went from zero to 255 because they were holding it in an 8-bit integer because it never needed to go higher than that. So it was the stack, like an overflow. Exactly. Yeah, integer overflow. If you were playing a a regular chill game with Gandhi, as soon as he advanced to the last age, you'd straight away get a message from him going, I'm going to nuke you. Because Gandhi went to the most aggressive player in the entire game. These are the sort of bugs I love because for anyone who doesn't understand computing and programming, no idea why it's happened. They just yeah. they don't they don't even think of it as a bug. But for anyone who who gets it, that it's brilliant that just nobody thought of it. That's I see awesome. there are people in the chat saying that it was actually an urban legend. There are people in the chat saying that that's not actually how it happens. Interesting. Oh, see, I've read a lot of stuff that says that was why it was Gandhi. Because that would make was... sense because Gandhi wouldn't get more yeah. aggressive towards you because he's Gandhi. So that exactly. when, he, when his uh, aggression's reduced and it was never increased, it, it would overflows. underflow. Yeah, underflow all the yeah. way to it. But no, you know, we'll look at that up. We will look that up, and we will have a more definitive answer for mm. you by next podcast. We will know yeah. next podcast is Gandhi aggressive. That's is Gandhi aggressive. <laughs> that's the question that must be answered. Where, where did he get his nukes from? Oh, really? <laughs> like, did he have to invade Russia or something? If if no one's watching this podcast, or if people are asking you, "Hey, what's that podcast like with uh, with Cal and Josh talking about MMOs?" just just tell them that we're we're discussing if Gandhi is aggressive. That's yeah. what we're discussing. Is I'm writing oh, this down. Hmm. I hope no one ever finds this book because it's just it's oh a, no, it's a Warhammer 40k book with "Is Gandhi Aggressive" written in it. Uh, someone says here, Path of Exile had a funny overflow bug recently too. If you did damage uh, over time, you could deal zero damage because damage over time was calculated as damage per minute. Right. Okay. It used a 32-bit integer. So if you passed 2.1 billion damage a minute, it, over- it underflowed and you did z- zero damage. Oh, yeah. And Does in it- fact, Path of Exile's got huge stacks of damage hasn't it path of exile has there's a moment in every and again we'll get on to talk about this in a second there's a moment in every mmorpg or every game where you are suddenly shown a screen or so much information that it overwhelms you and you just think nope and i think the path of exile moment in that is when you zoom out in the skill tree if you're playing path of exile you open the skill tree and you zoom out you're like i'm never learning this i like planning out my skill trees way like Day one. I like to look through it and I'm like, right, I'm doing this, 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 and this. And if I get a chance, I'll take that. Yeah. If I did that in Path of Exile, I'd just... Nope. You'd still uh, be doing fact, it. You, you, you yeah, could have started years ago. You'd still be doing it. I asked, because uh, Skiezos plays Path of Exile, and I asked him, I said, I was like, how do you deal with, with that? And he was like, oh, you just get used to it. Like, you just you just remember stuff. And I'm uh, like, yeah. you don't so much pick each ability, apparently. You pick a, a branch, a whole branch. Yeah, because you kind of have to in a way. You you yep. have to take a full branch to get to two more. Yeah. So it's more. It's less of what node do you want to take, and more of okay, which branch am I taking? And I suppose if you look at it like that, it's not so daunting because you don't have as many choices. But do you think? It's, but it still looks it. Do you think it's a UI problem? Do you think if they were to condense the UI from a massive huge grid into just you know, the the few choices that you have in front of you, 
Yeah. And then if you click on those choices, it shows you like, the ones they lead to. So a, I, new, I think... a new player doesn't open a massively overwhelming yeah. grid. They just open, oh, I can choose one of these four things. Oh, and they go yeah. to there. Oh, they go to there. And they can that's... explore in their own way. That's really not a bad idea. Only show possible paths. Yeah. Because that way, people will want to play through it and explore the yeah. extra stuff. Uh, and if people care enough, they'll Google it. Yeah. And they can. you can still, in the game, follow the paths through. You know, you could hear like, an, like a grayed out box and you click on that and it shows you what's next. And a grayed out box and you click on that and it shows you what's next. And you could see an overview. Maybe, maybe it would be a case of the overview is still in the game, but that's not yeah. the... The default view. Yeah. So when a new player logs into it, they see like a zoomed in simplified version. And in the bottom corner, you can be like, you know, see complete version. And you click on complete yeah. version, it shows you the whole thing. And you're like, right, okay, I see where we're going to now. Yeah. In fact, a uh, good one in my chat. Where Where's it gone? Uh, the rule of th the, the, uh, the three option rule is important in game design. And mm -hmm. this is something else that I was going to bring up with this. Uh, wow. You know, with their talents... Three things. Now, yeah. it, if you reduce that to two, one is definitively better than the other. You, you can't have this kind of holy trinity of, yep. you, you know, and if one isn't definitively better than the other, you've done a very good good job of uh, balancing them, but they're also yeah. now pointless. Yeah, if you can but, do, you know, ten damage now or five damage twice, I'm thinking they're exactly the same. If you're going to give me two choices, yeah. one is either definitely right yeah. or they're both literally the same choice. Yeah. And that's why you have to make uh, choices situational. Yeah. You do. And I, I think this is what puts me off Path of Exile. If if they're not the same, then they're situational. And if they're situational, there is no chance in hell I'm swapping them out for a situation. Yeah. Like all 6,000 orbs. No, mm -hmm. not happening. I mean, you look at Neverwinter. There's a, a boost up, uh, an upgrade that gives you an extra 2% damage or 3% damage versus dinosaurs. And that was such a parasitic design because dinosaurs were in like one expansion and then no one went back to fight them. So if yeah. you're going to have these these triple choices, and this again, this can talk about uh, design in general. If you're going to have three choices, it doesn't necessarily have to be three versions of the same thing. So it's not three versions of damage or three versions of healing. It could be this choice increases your damage, this choice increases your armor, and this choice increases your healing or whatever. But mm -hmm. again, are they even choices if... If the you're character, a DPS. You, yeah, if you're a DPS, you're <laughs> choosing the, the damage one. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think this is where WoW went wrong in the end. They mm -hmm. went... It, they felt so lackluster and just pointless that you almost mm -hmm. didn't care. Like, do you remember in WoW when you used to get to level 30 or 45 and you'd be like, yes, I've got a new talent, yeah. and you'd be, you couldn't wait to get to it. Now you get to it and you're just like, uh, that one. Yes. Because you're probably not going to use it in what you're doing, and if you are, all of them will work. Is this a case of games being solved again? Because, and I yeah. like to relate this back to Magic the Gathering, because Magic the Gathering is far from solved. In fact, I believe there was a, a paper published a couple of years ago that said it, Magic the Gathering is the most mathematically complex game ever made. It is mm. it is literally impossible to solve. It is Turing incomplete. You cannot solve magic because there are too many choices. With World of Warcraft, if you know what you want to do and if you know what build you want to get to, there are so many guides that you can do there. Would a good build tool, would a good character creation builder actually result in so many discussions that people didn't know what the best build was? Because in Neverwinter... The discussions between is it better to have 1% additional crit or 3% additional accuracy was like years long for the discussion. No one actually knew. The, there's a there's a problem with that. Now, I, I loved WoW because I was theory crafting things uh, when I got into like high-end raiding. We were theory crafting and I absolutely loved it. And then someone said to me, they were like... Because I kept saying, I don't know if I want more more mastery or more crit. Because I was like, I, if I weigh it up like this. And then somebody goes, oh, here's a DPS sim tool. Hmm. I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, just put your character's name in, find it on the armory. And it will simulate what you've got on now and tell you what you need to do the most possible damage. Yep. And the, the thing that I hate is that it works. Yeah. Because It's now... mathematically correct. Yeah. So is it a case of building something that even if it did work would... Again, it's about being situational. And this, ironically, you know, as people in the chat are pointing out, Path of Exile is so complicated, you actually can't necessarily solve it. So we've got a system that works the way we want to. It's just so mm -hmm. massively intimidating when you first see it that it's scary. So yeah. is it a case yeah. of presenting an incredibly complex system in a way that the player doesn't get scared off by its complexity? 
Yeah, and I think Shrek said this best. Layers. You just add extra layers of complexity yeah. in different mathematical forms. Um, you know, some percentage-based stuff on one layer, some trigonometry on another. Yeah. I don't know, just yeah. extra things. Just make it so exponentially hard to calculate that yeah. but it's almost impossible. The first decision a player has to make in the game should be relatively obvious and make them feel smart for making it. And the next decision, a little bit more complicated, but they can still make the correct decision with the knowledge they've gained. And then as yes. the player plays for hours and days and weeks and months, the complexity of these situations start to become much, much, much more varied. And the player, they're never making the wrong decision. They're just making a situational specific build decision. But it does need to start simple and then get more complicated. So, I mean, you're, and, playing, yeah, you're playing a game, first choice. Yeah. Hey, you've leveled up. Do you want more health or more damage? Okay, cool. I'm going to go for a damage dealer. I'll go for this. Next one. Yeah. Hey, do you want to take less damage initially, but more over time? Or do you want more armor against ranged attacks? And someone's thinking, actually, both of these things could be a good idea. Yeah, like you can think of many situations where each would be perfect. And yeah. this, again, I think ties in really well with uh, the whole horizontal gameplay. If you're, if you're making it that you're going to be in so many different situations, you know, at your current level and that, the choices are quite difficult because it's now what do you want to do? Yeah. Not, we're, not we're all going into um, Hellfire Citadel. Yeah. Everybody's going to need to take fire damage reduction and, and stuff like that. It's, it's more of a, you can go do whatever you want. Just pick what you want. And this is a major, major, major factor to that, is picking it permanent. That's uh, that's actually something we discussed recently, where we, we wanted some choices, and some people were like, we want it to be permanent and impactful. And this brought round the discussion of alts again. Because if, if something's, something's permanent, permanent and choice, impactful, yes, it is great, but what happens if a situation then arises that doesn't need that choice? Yeah, and, and this is what we were saying. So then you'll either be stuck as not the most efficient, or you make an alt that is. And... Uh, wow is a good example again yeah. you you know your class choice is permanent it's not quite mm -hmm. the same example but yeah let's say paladins are awful in hellfire citadel yeah and you know it's coming up and you know from the beta that paladins are awful your guild will say oi go get a priest come back with the shadow priest and you know yeah. we're, we're fine yeah if... and, and now you're building up a, an army of characters to for any situation and it's kind of like mm. yeah what it should be is the character should be a toolbox and the yeah. character should be a toolbox that you can change and manipulate to take to any given situation. If it's yes. one step beyond, if it's the player that's a toolbox, you need to choose the right character out of your bank mm -hmm. of characters. But if you're a role player, you don't want to choose the right character. You don't see your characters yeah. as just tools. You see your characters as people. And as yeah, you get actual, attached to them. Yeah. So you've been playing... Exactly. And RuneScape doesn't actually make you make any permanent choices at all. Nope. There's, there's no permanent... I mean, even in RuneScape, when you choose a god cape, of Sardom and Zamrat Gothics. You can go and change it. Yeah, like the, the blacksmith's gauntlets or the yeah. cooking gauntlets. Yes, you get to pick one for free, but if you go and spend 100k, you can swap them to something else. And I like the semi-permanent with a gold sink or a time yeah. sink or something. Yeah. As because... long as it, people look at it and think it's easier to do it this way than it is to make a new character and get the other stuff. Yeah. I think that's good game design. One of my most important aspects of Dungeons & Dragons... Oh, by the way, at some point, we are going to have to play Dungeons & Dragons. We'll sit down with a group of people. Absolutely. We'll play I've, I've got so many of the developers that keep asking me as well. Yeah. And one of the great things I love about Dungeons & Dragons is people talk about your alignment. Chaotic good, chaotic evil, neutral law, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Your alignment is not set in stone. Your alignment is a fallback to help you make choices when you don't know what you yeah. would otherwise do. But your alignment can absolutely change over time. Mm -hmm. That's character growth. If your alignment yeah. never ever changes, your character never grows or evolves. So if you were to make a decision in an MMORPG game, and then over time you realize, actually, you disagree with the decision you made, there should be a way to change it, but it should need effort and work. And yes. it should be difficult. So let's say that you, you're playing an MMORPG halfway through, you swear allegiance to a god. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Later on, you discover that actually your god did something you really don't agree with and you want to yeah. break your bond with it. Well, maybe that involves I think going... it's important yeah. to, to be able to. Regardless of how, I yeah. think you should be able to, yeah. yeah. But what about a quest? A deep, long, complex quest where 
you have to do something complex to break your alignment. You have the ability to change your character's mm. personality, to change your character's likes and desires and loves and hates, but it's not on a whim. It's You have to be committed to changing this. Yeah, I, I do like that. I really do. And um, again, what is it? what is it in WoW that forced you to pick between three reputations? Like, if you increase one, the other two go down. Oh, and it, God, it's like, yeah. You can do it over stuff. time. All I remember, and, and this is quite funny, so if you are a druid and you get negative reputation with the dryads of the forest, you can't speak to anybody who's a druid. Okay. Now, this led to a really funny bug in Legion where you have to speak to your artifact weapon master at the start of, of Legion. Well, there was one druid that had somehow got negative 21,000 reputation with uh, the dryads of the forest no idea how he's got this far and uh, he literally couldn't start the expansion for an estimated six and a half months if he was to do the reputation grind <laughs> because and, the npcs but, would ignore him they would need yeah, the, the npc wouldn't speak to him and he couldn't get into the legion city uh, like dalaran's instance until that and uh it's the one time i believe that blizzard have just gone We'll, we'll just give you the reputation because it was one yeah. person. Yeah, we'll change that for <laughs> It was you. amazing. I loved it. We'll change that for you. People in the chat yeah. are saying that your alignment in Dungeons & Dragons is not my character is X, therefore he must do X. It's your character is whatever you want them to do at any given time. And if yeah. you use that as a guide, you use it as a general kind of hint, it's more like an arrow pointing you in that rough direction. Yeah. Like, if an MMORPG hmm. had a thing where you have to make... And a lot of developers say, we want your decisions to be impactful. Yeah. Okay. Impactful doesn't necessarily mean permanent forever. You know, an impactful decision is choosing your career in real life. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you're stuck in it forever. You can change about this. I, I actually came up with a pretty good solution to something like this. And um, I'm going to speak to the developers of uh, Nightmare World about this. Hmm. But... I want it that at the start you can pick some sort of alliance. Hmm. Not not alliance, sorry, like, you know, chaotic good, but all that sort of stuff, but maybe worded differently. Yeah. And when you're in text conversations with NPCs, you've got two answers that are very standard. And then the third answer is generated based off of your alignment. So if you don't want to pick one of these two, you can always go to your fallback of this is me. Yeah. Like this is this would this is what I should pick, okay. but I can pick the others, mm. and uh, that it might have little impact, like like you say. Uh, but th again, the, the the thing after that was how do we make it non non permanent? But I like that idea of a, a time investment to you, do that. You could even allow the player to pick multiple options that have. Remember those quizzes on like Bebo or MySpace oh, years ago? No. What alignment are you? Click a thing that would they were just data well, mining. What pastor are you? Yeah. yeah. What what what, what Ninja Turtle would you marry if you? What Power Ranger are you? <laughs> You know, and they were just data mining. But if you were to make an MMORPG that had multiple chat responses and you were to pick whatever you want and the game kept track of them and yeah. your character sheet not only had the alignment that you've given yourself, but the alignment that you'd actually acted as. Yeah. Here's and, what you thought you were. Here's yeah, what you actually yeah, are. Here's yeah. what you have done to the world. Here's what here's what people think about you. So you yeah. can say, hey, I'm chaotic. Good. But actually, you start to look at all the decisions you've made and realize you're pretty much lawful evil. And then yeah, you're you realise, <laughs> yeah, actually, that's what's happened and stuff. So it wouldn't change anything, but it would be interesting to see what the game thought of you. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting, it's an interesting concept. I I think that's mm. something that people should play around with. But again, more. one of the fascinating things we're going to have in all of these podcasts is people are going to say, "Oh, it's been done." There are no new stories in Hollywood. Everything's yeah. been done. Every story's been oh, told. Gotcha. Everything's been talked about. Everything is, is derivative of the basic 12 Jungian archetypes. Every story has been told. If yeah. a game has done a system, it doesn't mean the system can't be improved on or wrecked or done again oh, yeah. or changed or done with something else. Us talking about ideas is not us saying this is the best idea. It's not even no. saying we're coming up with it. It's saying this is something that could work. How do we make it work? And ultimately, is it worth even trying to make work? I, the, I mean, we found out the other day, didn't we, that there's there's nothing that hasn't been done before with our podcast oh, yeah. names. So yeah, it's, it's it doesn't mean they were great podcasts. The name was fantastic, but it could have been a bit of a waste of a name. But yeah, yeah it's it's the same for games. There's there's so many that are just uh, just re reusing the same idea, like not because it was good, but just because it's been used a lot. And I think that's 
that that's definitely a big problem not not iterating on it and just feeding the same nonsense yeah so when we discuss ideas and concepts it's not us being amazed that we've come up with something first most likely we absolutely haven't no and if we come up with something and someone says oh it's been done in this game it failed it's not going to be us saying okay let's discount it it's going to say why did it fail what, yeah. was, what hey, was the reason it failed? That. And can we fix it? And if we can't fix it, okay, cool. What can we do to approximate it that's still kind of good? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, someone's just brought up player housing. I think they were on about Nightmare World. But that's a, that's another good example. Player housing, for the longest time, with people were trying to do it in the real world. And people were like, I don't like it. It just feels cheap. dumb. Yeah, it feels and then, cheap. Yeah, and then Jagex come along and do a pocket dimension, yeah. which initially everyone's like, oh, that's cheap. Like, that's a cop-out, that is. I, I wanted housing in the real world. And then they realise, actually, no, this is really cool. I don't yes. want strangers just wandering into my house. I I want to be able to do it, you know, expand it massively and not have to worry about space around me. One so of the, it's, yeah, player housing, yeah. especially... I'm a, I really don't like player housing in the overworld. And no. the reason for this is most people aren't very good designers. And it's so garish. You've got Christmas yeah, lights and exactly. everything. It's... Even if you give them exactly within aesthetic models to use, what would happen is they end up putting things upside down, backwards, yeah. inside out, flipping it around, and your immersion would be killed. You'd be walking along and you'd see a house built entirely of flower pots. You'd see a house Trust made me. of inverted balconies. And you'd be thinking, yeah, I get that all those balconies are actually part of your aesthetic, but you're an idiot for building it that way. And it's ruined all of my yeah soul town from shadow of the avatar was an absolute place when you give players the ability to build something in a game you'll realize most people are idiots yep arcade main city was the oh christ the the so you'd got these big beautiful cities that had been built in arcade by the the developers and then you go out to the outer towns where it's you know uh, slightly different ones built by the the developers to try and help blend into these this field that's about to it looked like a gypsy caravan site yeah. like seriously there was there was just fishing line going from one end to the other there was uh christmas lights turned upside down so they're like gravitating upwards and you've got three donkeys and pinatas sideways on a roof and it's mm. just you got to the point where you were like i'd rather not i'd yeah. Have I'd you ever, rather not. I have this thing where when I'm playing a game or when, especially like D&D or running kind of sign of stuff, I I like to get immersed in the world. And to me, taking yeah. it seriously is actually part of the fun. Yeah. So I take a lot of... You can role play yeah, by yourself. Exactly. I take a lot of what I do seriously. When I'm... I don't take... And this is a very, very big thing. I think this is an important thing for theatre. Don't take yourself seriously, but do take what you do seriously. Yes. Care about your job, care about doing it professionally, but don't care about you know people not taking the piss out of you. If I'm playing an MMORPG, I like to know that the aesthetic that I'm playing within is going to remain consistent and respected throughout. If I turn around the corner and suddenly there's a load of player-made houses and they're all just looking stupid and dumb, that ruins my experience in the game. Because I yeah. didn't sign up for that. I didn't want dumb, stupid player-made stuff. I wanted a game that looked like the game I bought. That's yeah. what I Someone, prefer. Someone's just put in chat, Dreamworld has used books as a roof for one of their buildings in the new starting area. It reminds me, honestly, whenever things do that, it reminds me of like a an 11 or a 12-year-old kid who's just discovered the ability to make any 3D model in anything going to all his friends hey look i made this really dumb thing how stupid and crazy and zany and random is this it's random humor it's katie to penguin of doom holds up spork stupid random humor yeah and it's, it's like lego yeah. isn't it it's shallow. when you've run out of the kit that you use let's yeah. say you've bought lego halo and you're just like yeah. well i guess i could use the lego star wars stuff and before you know it yeah. you've got like a, a house with a millennium falcon parked on top yeah. of it. it it's funny and it's silly and it's a joke and it's random but it doesn't last the kind of people that are making the stupid joke things are not the kind of people that want to stick around and see the game succeed. They want to make something dumb and stupid and move on to the next game. And unfortunately, they've impacted the world at that point for everyone else. Exactly. They, they've, they've ruined it. It's, yeah. it's a silly meme thing with no longevity, and I really do think that it, uh, it damages the long-term success of a game to be able to have yeah. dumb stuff. Because imagine if you want to try and sell your game to people who are looking for a serious game and a new player logs in and sees that. Yeah. It's... But that's not to say there isn't a place for it. The place, yeah. the place is when people actively choose to go and find it, such as Pocket Dimensions with yeah. RuneScape. You want to have a stupid, dumb, weird house you've built? Okay, cool. You can have a stupid, dumb, weird house in your own little place. 
that yeah. isn't impacting the rest of the player base as a whole. Yeah, it's it's definitely got its place. It's just not in the open world as the first thing that players see. And it's a shame. It, it's a shame that players can't be trusted to do that. Yeah. Because if you give anyone freedom to do something and, and hope to God that they're not going to, they will. Yeah. You need to, uh, I need to find a way to turn off Google Chrome alerts because I just got a really loud pop-up telling me that Tom Cruise was in Birmingham today. Oh, Tom Cruise was at, at I'm not going to say where, at, at our train station. No way. Uh, the other week. Okay. And uh, my my cousin's boyfriend came running to me. He's like, I just saw Tom Cruise at the train station. He landed and a helicopter somewhere in Nottingham in someone's garden. In a woman's, in yeah. a woman's garden. I yeah. heard it on the radio. So for those of you who aren't, um, <laughs> I like how that's breaking news. As if, breaking news. Well, guys, it, the reason for this is that Tom Cruise is making a film in England right now. And this is the most exciting thing to happen in England literally ever. So yeah. everyone cares about it. But I was in a, a shop the other day and I was listening to the radio playing through the shop and it said, oh, by the way, uh, Tom Cruise wanted to land his helicopter on a film set near Nottingham and they didn't allow him to do it. So he found someone with a really big garden in Nottingham countryside and landed his helicopter in their garden and then to say thank you, gave the kids of you know, the parents that lived in the house a helicopter ride. Which that's I thought, awesome. I mean, that, that's pretty cool, but it don't, it's... Don't think that I've just got, like, Tom Cruise alerts set up on my computer. Someone's just uh, put in my chat. Apparently, he's been here for a while and he's had his car stolen while he's over here. <laughs> Which doesn't surprise me. The, doesn't the, surprise the me at all. traditional British. I mean, yeah, to be fair... He's got wheels on bricks. I'm, like, an inch or two taller than Tom Cruise, so maybe I just keep tabs on him. So, if anything happens, I can just run over and be like, Hey! I look a little bit, with a bit of CGI, what do you need me to do? I'll step in. I'll stunt double. I'll, I mean, he can stunt double for himself. He's good at stunts. I'll yeah. do the other bits. You know, that'd be great. Isn't Tom Cruise like 5'7"? Yeah, I'm like 5'10". So, there we go. I'm slightly taller than Tom Cruise. I'm well, keeping you were taller a, than me. I'm keeping a track on him all the time. Oh my god, Josh is tiny. Right, listen. Just because I am not that magical six foot that every guy needs to be, I'm average height, all right? Unless everyone's got Tinder, in which case, obviously, you put six foot. I mean, but they're not bringing a tape measure, here, are they? Let's be honest. Well, actually, no. <laughs> I mean, if they did, I'd be ready. <laughs> if they did, I'd be ready for a Warhammer forty k game. If they walked up and they're like, uh, "Hey, you say you're six foot. I've got a tape measure." I'm like, "Brilliant! I've got some Space Marines. Let's get them set up. You can be the towel." Just, I'm just gonna say this: if you haven't put in your Tinder bio how tall you are, and a woman still shows up with a tape measure, run. Or Get the battlefield out. Get, or, them, get the minis ready. Get the battlefield out. Get ready for a good night of, uh, of tabletop wargaming. That, uh, that could be a thing that happens. Or just yeah. date very short women. I like how this podcast has taken a bit of a turn. This Worst is MMO ever, Tinder? Yes. Oh, that got demonetized on YouTube really fast, which really, really, really annoyed me because it got so many views. Like, How many views did that get? Oh my god, it was one of the most popular worst MMO ones. But I made I a, imagine. for anyone listening that isn't sure, I made a, a worst MMO ever episode, a parody episode on April the 1st about Tinder, reviewing it as if it were a worst an MMO. And at the end, YouTube asks you to categorise your videos, and I put it has light sexual overtones, which I thought was fair. And yeah. apparently it got manually reviewed by someone at YouTube, and they actually thought that it had heavy sexual overtones, and that got demonetized. That's dumb. That's I know. really dumb. I was, uh, oh, and then um, Isakai Demon Waifu. That also well, that, got... that obviously got demonetized. Yeah. You say obviously. YouTube were advertising it for like six months. I know. That's what it's made wrong. me make a video. Yeah. Saber Spark yeah. recently. One of my favorite YouTubers, Saber Spark, has made a video about some of the stuff, the games that YouTube has been advertising. And his video got demonetized. I mean, he's basically playing the YouTube demonetization speed run. That dude is just really pushing the boat out. But he's just making videos about stuff that YouTube is advertising. Yeah, I I haven't had anything demonetized yet, luckily. But I, I tend to play it quite safe. When you do, we'll we'll have a party. We'll have we a will. drink. It'd be great. Get we'll the make poppers a, out. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a party little banner. poppers, obviously. We'll <laughs> Now that would get demonetized. Yeah. <laughs> no, we'll get a banner, a big demonetization banner. I'll hang it up. It'd be great. Yeah, oh. we'll do it. But no, so 
What's the best MMORPG? <laughs> yeah, back on that. All right, so story-wise, uh, telling story-wise, you know one of my favourite ways of telling a story is having the player experience it instead of mm -hmm. just telling them what they should feel. You know a game that I think did this really, really well is Dead Space. I am yet to play Dead Space. Okay, Dead Space, brilliant. And one of the coolest things about it, uh, the developer basically said, I don't want any heads-up display. No HUD whatsoever. Yeah. All the information the player needs is given to them through in-game yes, means. with the, the spine yeah, health the spine bar. Yeah, the spine has your health. You know when you hold your gun up? That has yeah, a little it's got the ammo on dis display. I love it. You know when you do the map? You actually hold your hand up and a little 3D hologram pops up. There is yeah. no heads-up display. Every, all the yeah. information Dead Space has given to you through that. With an MMORPG, how much information can we give the player without just using a HUD? I I actually played around with the idea of this. Now, it, it's a difficult one. Health bar, right? You, you think you've got to have a health bar. And I actually stole the Dead Space idea. So I'd got a, I'd got a cape that was doing um, like this animation that filled up and down with your health. It's mm -hmm. kind of like... Uh, I think I just called it the Cape of Blood as just a, mm -hmm. a test item. Mm. And it's a really cool concept because it works. Yeah. However, it's got um, cape physics. So your health bar is doing link de loops around yeah. your face. And, and the health bar is one of the information that you need to be able to see at a glance quickly. You exactly. Don't, you don't want the player working to see important information. Yeah. So I think you could do it. But you'd then run into an issue where if it's not convenient enough, players will make a more convenient add-on. And yeah. then if there's a more convenient add-on, that's the new meta. If And, and yeah, then, you're balancing around that then. Let's just talk about that as far as game design goes. If you're designing a game and a player makes a really popular add-on, is it at that point worth just adding it into the game and having it be a toggle on-off? So I, I was actually watching Asmongold talk about this the other week uh, on, on his podcast. And it's a tough one because Final Fantasy is of the mindset that they will do that in most cases. Yep. WoW has got the opposite problem. So they have got, you know, there's all the, the there's DPS recount things that will show DPS meters. There's cool cooldown trackers for invisible cooldowns. Yep. Um, all these things that are really essential, like um, audio alerts when you're, when an AOE is about to go off under you before it even shows up. Yeah. Um, they balance around those, which has caused a real, like, disparity at the, the high end of PvE. Because now, if you don't have those, yeah. you're screwed. And it, But they've now got the issue. If we balance for people not using them, the ones who are are going to steamroll it. If yeah. we balance it for the ones that are using it, we're wiping players all day. So, so are it's they, a tricky one. They've actually taken the stance of people who have gone above and beyond to add in extra help are now what we are considering normal. Yes, but they won't offer you that as a solution. You know, the only thing and I want... Final RuneScape Fantasy. just did this. Oh, RuneScape yes. RuneScape has just done this. They've added in some stuff from RuneLock, XP haven't they? Because um, item tags, uh, inventory tags, I believe. Yeah. They've added in most of the, the, the most commonly used ones, which is interesting because it's, you're going to get to this point, and if we use RuneScape as an example, if they copy over all of the, the basic stuff from RuneLock, like visual things for xp tracking yep. um li little things like that well are they going to add in the auto clue scroll completer yeah i don't think they will but no. then that means that people are still going to go over to brune light correct unless you give them exactly what they're using yeah they're not going to you know what i'm really looking forward to in rune light is the hd upgrade because i am i can't wait i am to try paying that. a lot of attention to the dude i think it's like 711 or uh, some Twitter guy is is developing a, a HD upgrade to make it look like it was 2008, 2009 yeah. graphics, and I am super excited. I know that yeah, OS one of HD the developers of that happened. DM'd me not that long ago um, for something completely different. But yeah, that I've got in touch with someone from that. Yeah, it. I can't wait because there's two clients doing high definition. There's OS HD, and there's a specific HD plugin for Roomlight. And unless OSHD can catch up with all the stuff RuneLight's doing, RuneLight's going to overtake them. Yeah, OSHD has also not been cleared for usage, no, has it? No, Mod Matt K actually played it. Uh, he's got a picture of him on Twitter of yeah, him giving it a go. And the reason he said that he was not super happy with it is 
it looks to Jagex exactly like a botting client. It's not a botting client, but it looks like right. it is to them looking at it. So they can't actually tell the difference between you using OSHD to change the graphics or using OSHD to change anything else. Yeah, I got it, because it's probably using a mirror of the client, yeah. which I mean, I have the... pretty generally... Yeah, Mir mirrors are basically where it copies it. Uh, imagine it opens RuneScape, makes a clone of it, and edits stuff in the clone. So it's like injecting new textures and yeah. stuff because okay. they're 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 calls from servers, pretty much, aren't okay. they? Okay. Yeah. Um, with it being a mostly online. What's the best way to the way that their graphics and stuff works? The, the, it's downloaded on the fly as you walk around and whatever. So they're changing stuff client side that gets sent back. Yeah. Then, so the yeah. think about it. I'd imagine it's something to do with they're sending a packet. Um, you're sending the handshake back, which is now different from the original packet, which shows that you've modified it. Yeah. Instead of doing it the the difficult way, which is the right way. And to do what it. they need to work out is whether the modification is allowed, but that's going to be a hell of a lot yeah. of work on both sides. So if Rune exactly. Light, I think Rune Light, the HD plugin has still got like a month worth of testing to go, but if that's approved, that's going to be a major. It's going to be a game changer. Without and it's it's going to be difficult because if they've built it on like a mirror client. Mm. That's a lot of work to go back and... Yeah. It, it ha it's fundamentally built differently. Yeah. So they're, so, they're going to have a struggle with that. And if players want it, is it something... Because this is the thing that games companies do, especially MMOs. They wait for the player base to want something, and then they allow the player base to build it, because it's easier mm -hmm. to wait for a fan to build it. Adventure Quest Worlds... Adventure Quest 3D has just done this as well. Adventure Quest Worlds you used Flash, and then Flash got pretty much turned off on the internet. So now there's yeah. an AQ Arctic's launcher. You need to download the Arctic's launcher to play Adventure Quest Worlds. Okay. But there's been another a player for years and years and years called Leet Spider, and Leet Spider created the a special client, a launcher for Adventure Quest that contains so many more things. And okay. everyone used that launcher because it was great. And now Leet Spider has been... I don't know if it's employed or if it's just been working with a, as a paid consultant to actually create some things for Arctic Entertainment. They made a big song and dance about it. We're working with Leet Spider to make some stuff because the players wanted it. Do you think MMORPG companies just sit back and wait for passionate fans to fix their problems? I... I don't think it's so much that. I think they know it's a problem, but they know the consequence trade-off if they were to fix it themselves. So they just I think they just play the waiting game, and it's like, this isn't a problem until it is. And, and then when it is a problem, then we'll address it. And usually at that time, someone else has already addressed it way yeah. ahead of time. Yeah. I, I think that's the, the kind of train of thought for developers. Because yeah. um, the thing is, you know that if you're hiding information from a player to, to make it harder... Well, it's it's on the clients. People are still going to see that that information. Um, Zen has just put in the chat. That's the Bethesda way, and it is. It absolutely is. Yeah. Bethesda release a game, then a load mods of people patches. fix. Yeah, mods packs it, mods fix it, all that kind of stuff, and then yeah. suddenly they release the same game again ten times in Skyrim's case, and they yeah. add in a load of the famous fixes that people have already discovered. Yeah. It's, you're basically paying to fix their game for them. Yeah. So as far and as it, mods, it sucks. as far as mods for MMORPGs go. Do you think it's... Is it getting to a point now where a lot of modern MMOs are being made just assuming people are going to alter the game experience anyway? Yes. I I think it's 50-50. I don't think they want them to, but I think they're accepting that they will. Like Eventually, it's going to come around to if players hate it enough, they will find a way around it. And, and that's kind of a grey area, I think, because botting... I mean, if, look at this, for example, with WoW. Yeah. Uh, WoW had so many complex ability chains that you had to fire off that people started macroing it. Mm -hmm. Like with third-party software, which obviously flagged them as bots, caused issues. Yeah. Now, they then had to, to be able to differentiate between bots and players, they, they had to then say, well, okay, we'll give you the tools to make better macros in-game. You know, you, you can macro more things. Uh, but now we're banning third-party macros completely, yeah. even if they're doing the same thing. That way we can see if you're botting. Yeah. And I, I think it's kind of like twisting the developer's ha arm in a way. It's almost like an arms um, race between what yeah. players want to do 
what botters give them the ability to do, and then what the developers of the game think they should have the ability to do. It is, yes. I want to do this. Okay, here's how to do this. Or we can't have you doing that too well, so we'll let you do that, but not too much. But I want to do this. But here's how to do this. Oh, but you can't do that. as well. It's, it's this constant one-upsmanship. Someone in the mm -hmm. chat's just asked the question of how long the podcast is going to be. I think about two hours is probably yeah. a good... good so we've, got about, we've been live for one hour and 46 minutes, so maybe about 10, 15 more minutes of chat, then we'll wrap it up, and we'll probably be making a new YouTube channel in order to upload these yes. videos too so people on YouTube can watch them and enjoy yeah. them while they're meant to be at work. Exactly. Uh, I think we're doing the same for Spotify as well, aren't we? Yeah, we'll find a way to upload it. But uploading yeah. the VODs to either my channel or Callum's channel would just absolutely destroy average analytics. algorithm retention yeah. sign analytics and we are slaves to the great algorithm we must unfortunately it. yeah so we can't just do that but no we'll work with that uh, the podcast will end once one of them maxes all skills in osrs on stream <laughs> see you next year then as soon as um as soon as group iron man comes out dude i, t I tell you what yeah. when group iron man comes out we're on it. Yeah, we're, we're, I, I've we're got a few Group people as well. I'm sure you've got people in your community as well, probably moderators and stuff that are hyped for it. I, I'm sure we can get a team of five together. I think if we try just... really hard, we can probably find five people. I I can tell you now, we'd struggle to narrow it down to five. <laughs> my well, my Twitch mods are they are waiting for this. Yeah, we'll get a team. We'll, we'll get a team. Yeah. We'll work it on. It'd be great. We'll find a way to uh, to add it all up. But yeah, the the entire idea of the podcast is. We start with a question. The question in this podcast was, what's the greatest MMO of all time? And to be honest, it was a bit of a joke question because, of course, there's so many variables to think about and discuss. Yeah. And this also allows us to go off on tangents. I like the tangent tavern. And that's what I'm calling yeah, this tavern. Yeah, do you know what? I, we're doing it. I'm, yeah. I'm completely for it. I think we should just call yeah. it the tangent tavern. As in, it, it's, it starts off about games, but then it just kind of goes... Me and you have learned that we cannot stay on a topic to save our lives. No. We'll be talking for about 10 minutes on something and then we're just way off. No, I mean, I've still just got, gone. is Gandhi aggressive written down in my book? <laughs> That's the only thing that I'm taking away. And we've, we've still not answered that. We've still not answered. <laughs> At the end of the podcast, we're just going to be like, so it's RuneScape, isn't it? Yeah, it's RuneScape. Yeah. I mean, yeah we we answered much. the <laughs> what is the greatest MMO at the beginning. We finished that within like yeah. 10 seconds. And this has just been filling time. Yeah. That's all we're I doing mean, it, now. It can't be anything other than RuneScape. I mean, I suppose no, what, I, we, what we need to do at some point is, what's the worst MMO of all time? That's not I mean, this you know, session, if, but that'll happen. No. That, that's... Oh, that's that's going to be a good one. That I will, think we need a three-hour three hour yeah, podcast for that one. That'll be a big one. But no, so the entire idea... Also RuneScape. <laughs> in in <Yeah>. RuneScape 3. <laughs> RuneScape has won... Yeah, actually, do you know what? RuneScape, for me, holds the best... And the worst MMO ever, which is really, <laughs> really a feat. Like, it's like when someone says, "What's the greatest and the worst TV show?" You're like Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah Game of Thrones actually. is both the best and worst TV show of all time. I never thought about it like Brilliant. that. Brilliant. You're, you're spot on though. First five seasons, ten out of ten. Everything after that just digs, digs down. Yeah, digs. Lost. First episode of Lost, excellent. Everything after the first episode, slow descent. Yeah, I I recently watched Lost about six months ago for yeah. the first time ever, yeah. and it's not good. Lost it's is really an example of Lost reminds me of like a high school writing student writing the first episode of a mystery and just assuming that they're going to find the answers to the mystery as they go along. Like they haven't actually set yeah. up the answers; they've just said, "Well, maybe this is the thing." And that's actually what one of my favorite TV shows, Battlestar Galactica did i love the reboot battlestar galactica and okay. have you seen the reboot at all i haven't it's really good so they didn't know it was on sci-fi but they had they didn't know how many series they were going to get for the rebooted battlestar galactica so they wrote season one and two with a right. consistent plot and when they got renewed for season three four and five there are five seasons they had no idea how many seasons they were going to get so they just wrote random plots that they assumed yeah. they would fix later Never there quite knowing one, if they were going to fix it. There, there was one of these recently that I started to watch. Um, have you watched The Expanse? No, not yet, but I've heard of it. Right. They got three seasons um, given to them as a guarantee. Storytelling in this is possibly the best I've seen in a in an original series by like Amazon or Netflix. You know, their, their, their writing is normally like subpar. Yeah. I have never watched a sci-fi series that I've enjoyed so much. 
And then the congratulations, we've got a series four. We've been guaranteed a season four. And then you watch it and you're just like, but you've just really wrapped up on yeah. season three. You're, and you're now, done. You've finished. Or, yeah, you've yeah. You're fumbling for anything. Yeah, this is the, the supernatural problem. This is the, the, the exact supernatural issue has is probably happened with The Expanse. You've told your story. Stop. Yeah. Tell another story. You know, once once you get to the end, stop. Go and yeah. tell another story. Oh, I've been corrected. Expanse is not an original series. It's based on a book. I see. But was the series where the book finished? Because This I often... is what I was going to ask, because it feels like it. Someone, someone in chat can probably tell me. Uh, did it, did it end? Did the series end where the books ended? Because I have a feeling it did. Because I mean, Game of Thrones started no. to get bad when the Game of Thrones was great while they were using the books, and once yeah. they finished using the books, and it went, hey, we're gonna TV writers are gonna take over now. That's when it started to suck because TV writers write very differently to actual yes. adventure authors. I'm worried about the... Uh, I'm excited and worried about the Lord of the Rings Amazon series. Yeah. It, it, I don't want to overhype myself, but no. I, I have... I read uh, an article a while back saying that they showed it to... Is it Tolkien's son or grandson that's still alive that owns the, the rights? I think it's grandson. Yeah, it's got to be now because Tolkien wasn't... He, he yeah, was young so, during what, what World War Two or something. The guy was yeah, oh, guy. yeah. Amazon Amazon approached uh, his grandson and said, "Can we buy the rights to it off you?" And he was like, "No." And they said, "Okay, if we make the first two episodes, like no upfront agreement, we make them, we come and show you them, and you like them, will you consider it?" And he was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll consider it." And he's apparently said that he they have done it justice. Like oh, they, good. They've really done it justice. So I'm I'm happy in that sense, but uh, I'm still. Nervous for anything after the first two episodes. <laughs> yeah. People in the chat are asking about the schedule for the podcast in general. So here's what it's going to work. It's going to be every Monday, like it is... No, hang on, what day are we on today? It's Monday, isn't it? Yes, it is Monday today. Monday, yes. It's going to be every Monday uh, on Twitch after the premiere of whatever YouTube video I put out, which will probably be yep. a 15 to 20 minute opinion piece thing. We'll discuss a question for two hours. We'll go off on tangents... This is the Tangents yeah. Tavern, after all. We're going with that yeah. from now on. We'll talk about games. We'll be able to chat to all of you guys as well, and everything will go off onto YouTube afterwards. So it'll be weekly, and it'll be every Monday, if everyone is happy with that. I'm happy with that. And we can get guests it, on in the future. We can get yeah. gameplay. We can change around these graphics on the screen to include oh, yeah. multiplayer games that you and me are playing together. Yeah, I mean, we, we struggled to get this set up the way we wanted to begin with, so yeah. we'll we'll definitely have um, gameplay ability to to show so yeah. people in the yeah, chat I mean, saying kira tv yeah kira's top oh, yeah. of the list we, kira's top of the list yeah i was gonna say kira's top of my list as well yeah, straight up uh yeah, what i think no we'll doubt. do is we'll do a couple of uh you know this podcast need a segment of some sort that people can look forward to every week yeah pretty much it's oh a, a, a segment an interesting segment mod ash definitely i will ask mod i would ash do you know do. what i would love mod ash on here that I think dude cracks me up he's funny I think what we need to so do funny. is we need to make a couple of episodes and chat and go through a couple of yep. questions and general discussion kind of things. Feel out the, yeah, the theme of what we're... Yeah. Establish. And people are saying you need a segment every week. I'm happy to do a segment every week where we take on yeah. each other at a game or something. We yes. work out. Even if it's not an MMORPG. If, if it is great, yeah. if it isn't on a problem. I mean, I, I'm yeah. pretty sure I could beat you at any Guild Wars 2 jumping puzzle. I, I think you could. Yeah, you probably could. I'm awful at jumping puzzles. Like, really bad. In fact, I'll tell you what. In I mean, Halo, I'm sure that that's hyped people up no end for the jumping puzzle battle. Yeah. People are super psyched about yeah. the fact that But, that but wait, <laughs> I, I get infuriated. Do you remember collecting the skulls in Halo 3? Oh, and yeah. there were some of them that were jumping puzzles. Yeah, nah. and you could do stupid stuff with them. Yeah, collecting those skulls for the jumping puzzles infuriated me. I couldn't do it. I okay. hated it. Okay, we'll work something out. Or a RuneScape Jewel, or a, uh, an Elder Scrolls Online. Oh no, something. I'm all for the I'm all for the jumping puzzles. Okay, gotcha. We I'm, I'm going to up my game before we before we try. Only Rainbow Road. Yes, any kind of uh, oh, race. God. Fan mail segment. Let the fans create content. I mean, I'm there. There already is content of me and Cal. Yeah. Wh exists. Whether you want to read it or not, that's to your discretion. That but... exists. Yeah. In fact, yeah, I, I actually got asked to open a PO box so people could send fan mail, which I immediately thought that's great, and also that's horrendous. Let's not do that. Can patrons of Callum and Josh get priority for questions? Red Sky, good question. Let's put it this way: so 
this I like making my content free to everyone. I mean, yeah. Cal, you can do whatever you want to do with yours, but I think it's nice for people to be able to... Yeah, I'm exactly matter. the same. Yeah, so yeah, it's free to people. If people want to support by liking YouTube vids, watching on Twitch, following on Twitter, supporting on Patreon, totally up to them. You want to send me a message on Patreon or Cal a message on his Patreon and say, hey, yeah. can you answer this question? Yeah, absolutely. We'll definitely do that. We, we can definitely do a questions from viewers, yeah, questions just, from listeners. Just gather, gather some Patreon questions and stuff. I mean, we've both got... Um... I'm sure you've also got a Twitch subsection in your Discord, haven't you? Probably. If I haven't, I'll yeah. make one. And the mods will hate me for it. Because every time I make a new room, the mods message me going, Josh, what is this new room? Yeah. Like, oh, that's the same, room for the game that everyone's going to Same with me. Except I, I usually get my moderator to do all that for me. I'm like, do you want to sort out the stuff? Yeah. And he, he, he goes mad because he'll he'll name them wrong. He'll, oh, God, do you know what he did the other day? And this, you, I don't know if you've had this. He found out, he was like, oh... You can, there's something where you can put text in online and it will convert it to italics or bold. He did that to every single channel in my Discord, right? And then when you do hashtag to try and search it, you can't find any channels. Because it they're all in italics. Because it doesn't count. Because oh, it doesn't that's count. Brilliant. And I messaged him. I was like, what were you thinking? He was like, it looks really cool, doesn't it? I was like, I can't tag a single channel. He, was, he just gave me a big oof and that was it. <laughs> He's it was like, more like a your problem, solve it. <laughs> Sucks to be you, I'm off to bed. And that's the kind of thing that <laughs> yeah. it will be. Well, my shift's over. Yeah. So yes, what I think it will be is it'll be a discussion about MMO. Can patrons get some priority in questions asked? I mean, yeah, absolutely. If people if people want to message on Patreon and ask a gather question, them beforehand, sweet, yeah. we'll gather them all up, we'll answer them, we'll do what we can. It's going to be a different question every week. It's going to be a different aspect. We will, we're still feeling out the format. We're still yeah. seeing what people want, if people like it, and we're still balancing the audio levels. I think the audio has been pretty damn good. For we've been, that's one. been the thing we've been trying the hardest to get right. Yeah. So I think we're good with that, yeah. and it's happy. But what has everyone in chat thought? Has it been an interesting, tangent-based, MMORPG kind of gaming Is it everything discussion? you dreamed it would? Yeah. Is, it, is this your dream world? Is that what it's been? Oh, no. Look at Cal's face. <laughs> uh, but no, in all seriousness, this is also going to be on Spotify and stuff. Right, what I think we should do is I've got to go and research whether Gandhi is aggressive. We've got to talk about uh, what we're going to do about next week. Wednesday will be another video. Saturday will be our worst MMO ever episode. Cal, what have you got coming up on YouTube this week? Uh, I am jumping back into the dream world tomorrow uh, for, for the first time in a month. Are we returning? We're returning to Return Dreamworld. Return to Dreamworld. I'm telling you now, there is so much, so much going on there. Not necessarily all good. I mean, their developers have left them. Uh, they are on their <laughs> My own. My developers now. <sighs> left, left me. me. <laughs> yeah, they're they're on their own, out in the cold. So it'll be interesting to see what happens from now on. There's every asset now except Pirate Bay that you've seen in their trailer has basically been bunged into the game. Excellent. That big weird tentacle creature, a flying ship that I don't think flies. Uh, water that turns black if you get too close to it. it. There's so many things that I'm excited to share tomorrow. I really do so. think Dreamworld is going to be one of those things in like 10 years time when people can't remember whether it actually... Was it like a fever dream we fever all dream. had? You know when someone... You, know, you sat there and someone reminds you of something from childhood and you're thinking, I thought I dreamed that. Like, yeah. that wasn't a thing. And people go, yeah. hey, do you remember like that Courage the Cowardly Dog episode with Return the Slab? And people are thinking, I thought I dreamed. I thought that 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 was a nightmare I had, wasn't it? And you go, no, that was what was all happened. We all collectively did that. That's what it's going to be. Dream World is going to be that yeah. thing years from now that people suddenly remember actually existed. I here's the thing, right? I hope ten years from now that Dream World is still going. I, I hope that it's slowly. Right? Slowly but surely becomes something playable and just about acceptable. Oh god, I love the idea that um you'd have you'd have the uh, the guys on like some market stall somewhere trying really hard to sell their Bluetooth speaker to someone and taking all the profit they make from that and pumping it back into Dreamworld. I mean it slowly yeah. becomes a Minecraft clone. <laughs> yeah. Oh it's, the... it's going to be wild to see what actually happens with it yeah. because I'm just impressed that they haven't run away. Yeah, I, I think I, everyone's I impressed with that. Yeah, yeah, I was certain. Do you think they haven't because too many people are watching them? Do you think that was the plan and then it became way more popular than they expected it to be? I don't know. I I keep like seesawing bet between that and sheer incompetence. Mm. But it. Yeah. The, the thing is, 
if it is incompetence and they genuinely thought they could do this, that's that's insane incompetence. That's like next level. Someone in the chat made a very good point. Y Combinator. If Y Combinator are watching them to see what they yeah. do with the money they've got, they need to keep making it. Yeah. Which which also makes me think that they wouldn't have run in the first place for that reason. Because they, they couldn't do a, a run on Y yeah. Combinator. I really thought that they would have just taken the money, made something crap, hope it died down and left with it. I think yeah. they hope it dies. But keep it alive. Keep that flame burning. Yeah. And then, uh, they've got to keep making something. I I genuinely think with the money they've got, if they hired developers like the ones that have just left them, yeah. they could actually make something. It's never going to be what they promised. No. But they, yeah. they could make something that people would look at and go, yeah, I, I appreciate that in, in its own way. I think they've aimed way too high. And this is definitely yeah. a topic for the future. MMORPGs yeah. starting too big. Yeah. If you start too big, cream. you spread your player base physically over the world. And the world is so big that you don't bump into any players. If you start yeah. relatively small, at least everyone is around you together. I mean, I think New World's yep. doing quite well with that. New World isn't massive. It's big yeah. enough to make sure everyone feels together. As long as they had content to do, like RuneScape. The world in RuneScape isn't huge. You think it is, but... Yeah, you think it is because not. of the distance it takes to get to places, but it isn't actually massive. Yeah, we need to make it small. Cross-platform is nothing we need to talk about as well. Uh, quick mm -hmm. question to the guys in my chat. I've actually had some tavern ambience playing in the background, just just gently, just lightly. It's like people laughing and clinking drinks. Has anyone picked up on it? Has it added to the ambience or the feel? Has it added to the aesthetic? That's what I forgot we, we added that. I, I, I did. Yeah. I've got it playing in the background. Same uh, same for my, my guys. Uh, can you actually even hear the tavern music or whatever it was I'll in the just, background? I'll just turn it up slightly. I, mean, I thought it'd be nice if we're going for the whole tavern aspect. I thought it'd yeah. be nice just to have like a little bit of... Uh, it's a bit quiet, couldn't tell. Yeah, I oh, forgot sorry. I even got it on at all, to be honest. Right. Well, I liked it, because I, I wanted to go for like classic fantasy-style stuff. I think fantasy yeah. is decent. Anyway, yeah. I think that is going to wrap it up for tonight, so let's circle back so. to the main question. Cal, what's the yeah. greatest MMORPG of all time? Club Penguin. Yeah, spot on. That's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. I, mean, I was going to go with Habbo Hotel, but oh. uh, no, I think yeah. um, it's Fallout 76. What else is sure. good? Fallout 76. No, it's the Pirates of the Caribbean game. The, um, oh, no. the Disney, the, the closed down Earth 2 is the greatest. It's potential. That's what it is. I mean, it could have been the Matrix Online. It, I was I was stunned when you said that. Yeah, it could have been the Matrix Online. Anyway, guys, thank you very, very much to my chat for joining us for this first episode of the Tangent Tavern, where we talk about games and other stuff. Cal, how's it been for yeah. you? It's been good for it, me. I'll tell you how's what, it for it's, you? Been, it's been a blast. I've really enjoyed it. And again, thank you guys for coming along. It's uh, It's been great to have you here with your questions. All right. We will see everyone next week on Monday for another Tangent yeah. Tavern. Until then, Same we'll time. see you on Wednesday for my videos. Cal, when's your next video out? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, Tomorrow YouTube, yeah. Cal, go and follow. You guys have a great night. 